Podcast.201. Hey, Brian, what's up? Hey, Adam. Oh, what's this? Adam, what are you doing? Adam! No! Hey, everyone. Jason here. Uh, we've tried to find... Someone to do the Kahoot. Uh, you know what, though? We could just try and bring him back. I happen to have this. So, uh, let's see what happens. <laughs> hey, everyone. How are we doing? I know. My hair so so short. I look so professional. I know, like... It's almost like that that wasn't filmed a little while ago. <laughs> That's uh, Jason, my my co-host. Everyone should be hearing and seeing me. I'm having fun with the volume here. You know we like to listen to our uh, punch out to get started here, to get hyped for the Kahoot. I got my Mario. We should have listened to Mario for this. Hair's gonna get just crazy long. Just this is going. This is insanity. I just look at it and I'm just like, my hair is getting so long. <laughs> it is Kahoot time. Brian's got more than enough coffee in him. So much coffee. So much coffee. We got we got some uh, Mega Man going. We'll get hyped for some Mega Man. We'll blend in some Kahoot in the background. Just DJing it. Ooh, 1,000 points for first place. You know, we should do that for the final Kahoot. I might go crazy on the final Kahoot. What's in my coffee? I wish I could show it. There's no way to, like, show it, is it? Oh, wait, you can. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm going to spill it on the keyboard. <laughs> That's cream and sugar. Good old cream and sugar in the coffee right there. Remember, the code is sent out via the announcement. I was messing around with my, um, with my keying. So I'd be keyed a little bit better. <laughs> as long as you're of age. <laughs> You're allowed to do that if you're of age. <laughs> coffee. My New York accent at time with my coffee. My, I've got so many cousins who are like, like coffee, because they're from New York and New Jersey. I can hear myself. Get ready for the Kahoot. Get ready. Get ready, everyone, for the Kahoot! Whoa. I haven't found it. This place is so weird. I gotta find a good way to, like, use those in lecture. I don't have... <laughs> Polly D. Who, who is that again? I forget. I'm thinking, like, Polly Shore. I know, I know the name. We'll wait here for another uh, three, four minutes. We'll just chill. Just chill and get ready for the Kahoot is what we do. How, how's everyone doing? Everyone awake like I am? It is Jersey Shore. Yeah, that's where it's from. I can't remember. I, I watched so little Jersey, Jersey Shore. So um, I was born in New York. And then um, I only lived in New York till I was four. But my parents are from uh, Rochester and um, from the Bronx. Um, there you go, wake up. So yeah, no, mo both my parents have, well, I don't know, my mom has a bit of a more of a New York accent than my dad does, but we've been in the South since 1986. So they moved down here when they were like 36. That tells you how old my parents are. So we've been in the South since 1986. And you know, I grew up pretty much, I grew up in North Carolina. Remember to look online for the code. Um, uh, I hope with, but here's the biggest thing. So once again, let's reiterate. Um, and I do love this. I love Knoxville. I love Knoxville. Um, <laughs> crazy New Jersey accent. Um, Knoxville's awesome. Knoxville, favorite place I've probably ever lived. Um, just not just saying that cause I live here right now, but it's Knoxville's got hard Knox pizza. We've got so many things. We've got, you know, UT, we've got the Botanical Gardens, we've got Market Square, we've got Farragut, we've got, like, the city with Gay Street, with, you know, 
Highland. We got so many great things around here. If I got a question wrong on the quiz because around it, yep, just email me about the rounding. As long as it's, it's gotta be close though. It's gotta be close. It can't be like, you can't put 0.03 and it'd be like 0.08. <laughs> it's gotta be close. Um, no, you're fine, you're fine. Ask, feel free to ask a question. I was, I was catching up on emails between this. I was drinking all my coffee to get hype. Um, but like, uh, yeah, as long as it's close. And like, if you send me a screenshot, it even helps. Cause then like, then I don't have to like, look it up. I'll look it up and check usually. The, but yeah, as long as the screenshot's what it is. Um, but like I've worked in New Jersey, not New Jersey, what am I saying? I've worked in Texas. I've worked in Texas. I've worked in Oklahoma. I've worked in Virginia. Um, I've lived in mostly the South. Uh, yeah, you could watch exam two review. It's not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea. And then we'll be reviewing tomorrow. Like anything you see like exam two review. I kept it purposely this mini term and everything. Virginia, I worked, I worked in Virginia winter of 2010. Um, what's on the practice quiz? The review assignments are good. I would do review assignments. If I, okay, so here's what I would do if I was you. If I was you, I'd start looking over the practice test and we'll, there's, there's all the videos. So if you go to the, uh, you know, the site, I'll put it in the chat. Well, no, I don't have it. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Everything just went crazy. Okay. So that's one UTK. Uh, I'll put this in the um, chat. I think most people know where to go. And if you're ever confused where to go, just please email me. I know there's a lot of resources. Um, are there any extra random practice problems beside the quiz? Uh, the test shows a pretty good example. I think the test is a really good example. Like the, the thing that I sent right here that'll have videos and I'll have stuff. I think it's pretty good. Um, and so the practice, like, it's gonna be very similar to test one. It's kind of, I hate to say this, it's kind of like you know it or you don't know it. I hate to say it in that kind of scary way, but there's also, I would say a lot of surface level things, like, like I'm basically giving away a question. Are you ready? Yeah, like listen up, you wait. Okay, let's go, let's go. Are you ready? Let's say, everyone's like listening intensely right now. This is like he's talking about the test. Let's say uh, we have a a company makes one thousand. A company makes one thousand. Uh, let's say widgets. Doesn't matter what they make. It can be anything. A company makes one thousand widgets product, and then um, we go in and we sample four hundred of these widgets. Were any conditions violated? If you can solve this one really quickly then you, you'll you'll see a question like that on the test and you'll be like, oh, pfft, that's the answer. A company makes 1,000 widgets. We go in and sample 400 of them. Were any conditions violated? They make 1,000 widgets and we're going to sample 400. If you got it like this, then you knew it. Yep, we sampled more than 10%. We violated the 10% condition. And, and, and it should, it, it'll go into more detail usually, but that's the key component to catch. And it, it could say like, you know, did we violate the 10% condition? And yes, we sampled more than 10%. There's a question like that on the test. I was, you know, I sent out the email saying the test ready. I was looking over all the questions. I'll have more to say tomorrow. I definitely would wait till tomorrow to take the test. Like I wouldn't be like, oh, the test is open. I did the practice. You know, I, I try to help everyone out, try to get everyone on track. Um, and that, that was a chapter 13 question right there. That was chapter 13. Um, it's kind of like those things like you know it or you don't. D I, you know, I, that's so scary to say because if you heard the question, you were like, okay, wait a minute. What are the conditions for sampling um, from taking samples and stuff like that? We can't sample more than 10%. And then when you hear, okay, we sampled 400 out of the 1,000, we sampled more than 10%. So it would be, yeah, we'd have to sample less than 100. Yeah, and and, and the problem is we, didn't, we can't do written responses. I guess there could be a numeric response to say, what is the maximum amount that the company could sample? But then we have to watch out because someone might say 99. And there was a question in, in uh, during class today where someone was like, w was it exactly 10%? And I meant, I think Camden, Camden has so many great Camden. If you're in the chat, you were, you were, you were, boom. You, questions were awesome today. Like, not that they're not awesome some days, but man, you just like, you were pushing my knowledge. Um, some people, it just depends. 10% is not like you can't, like if you sample 11, it doesn't explode. But the idea of it gets, you get this compounding error and a lot of people put the threshold at 10%. So it's not like if you sample 10.1%, all of a sudden it's horrible. It's just this kind of like, you know, imagine, you know, when is a drink too full? Like if I'm going to fill this glass, some people might say like, oh, you can fill it up to like almost the brim. But then, you know, 
I guess that one does have like a finite point of when it's over, but it it's you know there's these shades of gray. Um, yeah, stream should be on. Check check the stream. Yep, it's on. I guess I left it on. We'll get started here in about two minutes. Any other last questions? I'll turn back on some coat music here. Oh, we gotta we gotta hear gotta hear that Mario music. Should we have Mario glass? Ask a few more questions if you have them. As we get started here with some Mario on stream, I'm just gonna drop this on the keyboard. It's -a me, Mario. That sounded really well. It's -a me, Mario. What are you gonna do tomorrow? Uh, we will review during class, and we'll do some new material during class. We'll probably spend like an hour reviewing, and we'll also do new material. So there'll be new material, and there's a lot. You got 2,000, that is awesome. I added in a lot of points. I'll respond to emails. Make sure to go to the Stats One site for the kit. I mean, go to our, I sent out an announcement. Okay, are we about ready? Everyone in? Everyone in? All the questions out of the way? I'd say it's about the same. Yeah. And, and if something weird happens and everyone fails it, of course I'm gonna revise. So, you know, there's gonna be variation. If I had to guess what's gonna happen tomorrow, there's gonna be a bimodal distribution. Can anyone put into words what Brian's saying by saying there's gonna be a very strong bimodal distribution? I think there's gonna be a very strong bimodal distribution. What do you guys think? What does that mean? What am I telling you guys? Yep. <laughs> Not we're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, 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 you guys are gonna, there's gonna be a strong bimodality to this distribution. Um, yeah, there's gonna be kind of like you either you either know it or you don't, and it's gonna we're gonna see. Um, there's gonna be some people who just like, well, I got an 85, and then with your quizzes, it's gonna help. So, here's the biggest once again the biggest advice I can give. Do your quizzes, <laughs> please do the quizzes. I want everyone to feel like they have a great avenue towards success. So if you're if you're freaking out a little bit, what are you gonna do tonight? You're gonna you're gonna do make sure you get 100 on the chapter 13, and maybe do the confidence interval stuff. Get as much as you can done on the quizzes, because here's the thing, doing the quizzes is going to help your test grade, like doing the quizzes. And, and it's also more similar to what you'll be doing because the tests are now kind of like the quizzes. So doing the quizzes sets you up to like, you're kind of doing similar stuff. It's not going to be exactly like the quizzes, but one, you're getting points on your test by getting great quiz grades. And then two, you're, you're studying. So literally probably one of the best things to do tonight is to do both of them just practice get them done get as high grades as you can uh it'll go on this one it'll be on this one josh great question josh and i think we're doing 200 points for first we'll go crazy on the last one we'll do like not we're doing 200 for first 100 for second and 50 for third so make sure to play the coot and win do quizzes and then look yeah great stuff yep um if i was you guys i would relax some this weekend but if I was in this class this weekend, I'd probably spend like three, three hours each day. Like I'd, I'd said, I know it's a lot. I mean, it's, it's just a, it's the end of, we'll, we'll, we'll be done this time next week. It'll be, you'll be taking the final. So it's, it's so close. <laughs> Everyone will compete for last then. They'll wait till the last second. There's one answer question. <laughs> Can't do that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's do this. And project we'll talk about on Friday because I gotta I gotta finish that up. I gotta get that all written. So will next Wednesday only be the final? There'll also be an assignment due. So it's 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 busy. So busy. Monday and Tuesday. Monday for extra credit, Tuesday for regular credit. And I'll I'll do a stream on Monday where I probably go over the project a lot. So if I was in the class, I'd probably be doing all my homework over the weekend. I'd look at the project, and then on Monday. I'd come to the stream where Brian's gonna help do like project help on Monday. You're not required to go to that. It'll be recorded. And I'll I'll go through probably the whole project on Monday instead of like doing class. So Monday will be, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Ben, I'll see you in there. And you've been practicing R, right? Dude, you're gonna be like way ahead of everybody. Cool. Yeah. Now, if you guys like it and you wanna do, I, I'm really happy. Ben, that's awesome. I will be seeing you on Thursday. <laughs> we'll finish class, Ben, and then I'll be like, hey. You'll come in here with your Streamlab points. I might have to reset them because you got so many points. Awesome. It's not really cumulative. There's these things we call, we'll, we'll start here in literally one minute. It's these things we call, what do we call them? Uh, tools and techniques. 
um say oh gosh well i'm gonna be in texas uh next semester and i'll be teaching from texas because my fiance and i live in texas she's she's the veterinarian she's the smart one I, I i say that and i really mean that she's like way smarter than me she'd be like i already told you guys this she'd say no but i'd be like you're smarter than me <laughs> she is she's smarter and i don't know she's the worst way ever. anyways i'm gonna stop i just miss her okay you guys ready <laughs> um is she, I just can see her, like, I can see saying those things and her just blushing. I'm like, but you are. She'd be like, well, you know statistics. I'm like, but that's all I know. I don't know anything else. She'd be like, well, you know piano. I'm like, okay, no math. I'm like, well, I'm not going to. All right, I'm having a conversation in my head right now. <laughs> She'd be like, well, you know everything. <laughs> okay, you guys ready? <laughs> well, uh, oh, I, I miss her. Oh, my gosh. I This green screen is just going nuts right now. Okay. Like, this is what I do since I can't see her. I just have conversations in my head. <laughs> okay. Here we... It's about time. Here we go. Oh, let's take down the blocks. We got to get ready for some questions. Brian's going to try to hop out of the way. Oh, no, wait. Oh, wait, wait. Better not block one. Okay, the probability of getting a multiple choice question correct is 80%. What is the probability you get at least one wrong? We're starting with a hard question here. We're going to see. Be careful. Slow down. Slow down. I'm going to help you solve this. You ready? So we have here that the probability you get something right is 80%. What is the probability you get at least one wrong? So when we think about this, let's put this in the chat right here. You'll either get every question wrong. Like you'll get the first wrong and the second wrong and the third wrong and the fourth wrong and the fifth wrong. Like that's a possibility. So, or you could get them all right. Ooh, I did it wrong first. So you could get every question right, or you could get every question wrong. But those aren't like everything that could occur. Now, but listen to this carefully and see if you agree with me. You will either get every question right, or you'll get at least one wrong. So putting this in the chat right here, so watch your chat. We've got one equals, because this is everything that can occur, the probability of all right or we have because we're adding or you can get probability of at least one wrong so watch your chat right there it's in the chat for you that is part of the answer to this one you're so close to figuring it out if you're following this logic right here like you'll either get them all right or at least one wrong solving the mathematical equation you can solve that the probability of at least one wrong is everything but all the questions right so this is the probability of at least one wrong. So now all you have to figure out to figure out the probability of at least one wrong is the probability of getting everything right. And what's the probability of getting everything right? Well, 0.8 is the probability of right. And 0.8 raised to the fifth power is getting all five of them right. So one minus 0.8 to the fifth power. So if you followed along the chat, maybe and slow it down, write everything down as we do it. These are some of the toughest problems that could be on the test. We started with just like scaring everyone here immediately and who got it? How many people got this really tough problem? I can put this, I can put myself. Oh, we tricked so many people. Who feels like they really understood that? If you understood this problem, you got one of the toughest problems that could be on the test. I know I started with something really tough, but this right here, let's look at didn't click in time. Oh no, got it, nice job. So when I slowed down, yes, that's a really tough problem. So the minus one, yeah, that's it. And I think this right here, the 0.328, if you solve it out, is probably equal to this. Can anyone put into words? You understand now? Good. I know I, this is probability stuff. It's kind of fun. If that is correct, 0.8 to the fifth power, that's the probability of getting them all right. And you will either get every question right, or you'll get at least one wrong. Just imagine you're taking a multiple choice test with five questions on it. You either get every single question right, or you get at least one wrong. And that's really tricky. It's These are tougher questions. And take notes, definitely. And Keaton, did you get 0.328 by doing 0.8 to the fifth power? Because 0.8 to the fifth power is you get the first right, and the second right, and the third right, and the fourth right, and the fifth right. And that would be getting every question correct. And you either get every question correct or you'll get at least one wrong. 
that would be the probability of getting everything right because it's 0 0.8 times 0 0.8 times 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8. I think you can try to join. Oh, you can still, yeah, thank you, Neilan, right there. I just didn't subtract by one. You got it. Because when you subtract by one, that's you don't get everything correct. So you either get everything right or you don't get everything right. Does that make sense? It's pretty easy to say right there. You either get everything right or you do not get everything right. And not getting everything right means you you do one minus it. Um, we would not do that. Good question, Keaton. Um, those can be done with permutations. It won't be on this test. That We wouldn't do that on in stats when we don't do those test problems. It's a good question, though. Um, yeah, good. Glad if you if you if you got it. That was a tough one. Let's slow it down right here. Let's make it a little bit easier. You ready? Here we go with question number two. Who's in the lead? <laughs> Lively camel with magic giraffe. I'm betting on bold squid right here. Bold squid. Bold squid. Bold squid. Let's see. Bold squid. Come on. Here we go. Bold squid. You can win it. Two events that can be easily added together must be what? Two events that can be easily added together. Now, if you have your note-taking quiz done for tonight, you will know this instantaneously. Two events that can be easily added together. There's two words for it. Oh, no. A lot of people got to get this right. It's going to hurt. They can be added together. This is when we use the or word. Like, the probability you make an A or a B. They can't both happen. You can't make an A and a B. Those two events are... Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. This one tricks everybody. No, 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 no. No, no, no. I'm done. I'm gone. Kahoot over. Let's just go here to the to the end game button. Should we continue? Are we done? Is the Kahoot over? Okay, it's not done. <laughs> Thank you, God. All right, we're back. <laughs> okay, let's review. Um, so when we add together events, so make sure this is a good review for tonight. Um, make sure you have your chart out, but, um, when we add together events, the rule is that they are disjoint or mutually exclusive. When we multiply events, two events must be what of each other. Two events that we would multiply together must be what of each other. Multiplying two events, the two events must be what of each other. Who can fill it in for me right here? 50 points. Independent Neelan right there. Boom. 50 points, Neelan. Secret extra credit right there. So two events that can be multiplied must be independent. When we add together two events, do you guys remember disjoint where the, the circles don't line up? So disjoint means that the two don't overlap in what they do. And then you can simply add together the probability of A or B. So you'll see more questions coming up reviewing probability. It's one of my favorite things to review. Um, I think Zulan was saying earlier that this is pretty easy stuff. As in like, it, it makes more sense. It's, it's less complicated. There's less... You know, we deal with probability more often than we deal with sampling distributions. So I would say this is something maybe more people have seen, and that's why I would say it's easier. So uh, when you're like, okay, wait a minute, disjoint, add, or uh, add. So disjoint means we can add them. It's the same thing as mutually exclusive. So notice here that disjoint and mutually exclusive are the same thing. And disjoint would technically mean the two events are dependent. But don't connect dependent to adding things together. This is confusing. I'm going to slow it down. If you make an A, you can't make a B. Does that make sense? Like in stat 21, if you make an A, you can't make a B. Disjoint events are technically dependent. But we're adding them together because they're disjoint. Don't worry about the independence dependence for adding things together. It's just that disjoint events, because if one happens the other can't. They're technically dependent because as soon as you make an A, you can't make a B. The circles do not overlap. So don't think about dependent when you think about things like uh, disjoint or adding things together. It, it, they, there's an overlap between the concepts, but think when you think of independent and dependent, think of the rule of multiplication. So multiplication deals with independent, dependent, and I bet you who's in the lead because I bet you this next question, squid, squid, you're hanging in there. Squid grabbing on squid you got this squid magic giraffe is leading the way we got all the coffee all the coffee it's snowing can't be 100 degrees exactly so we could add that together claire points out right there claire secret 50 points are studying along you can only get one secret 50 during this i'm going to try to give out a bunch of secret 50s so by playing along you might get a secret 50 by comments right there keep those comments coming um as claire points out we've got uh snowing outside and 100 degrees those are disjoint things 
So it can't be snowing out and 100 degrees. Those are disjoint. Coffee at 4.30, you bet, because I'm probably going to one. <laughs> two events that have no influence on the probability of each other are what? Two events that have no influence of the probability on each other. What is this definition? We're just going to jam out here. Two events that have no influence on the probability of each other. Coffee. Like drinking coffee. Ooh, but drinking coffee and acing the test, there might be. Like people who drink coffee are more likely. But you can't say it causes you to do well. You guys got it. Yep. That's what independent means. So you could say like um, maybe, you know, you think about, let's say the color of the T-shirt you wear and your score on the test. So we look at, you know, like the color of shirt someone wears and then their score on the test. You would think that those two would be independent. Like this would not in any way any influence this. Like if you know the color of someone's shirt, that's not going to tell you any information about their test score. So are there a lot of just... Uh, Oh, yeah, and I don't have disinterest. There's not a lot. I'd say it's probably like eight points of the test, seven, eight points. Not too much. We'll, we'll talk about that tomorrow, too, because I don't think I've, I don't think I have much disinterest on this. So, oh, no. <laughs> Needy, you get 50 points right there. Indeed. <laughs> 50 points, Needy. I need to fix that. Oh, my gosh. No, you didn't see that. No, it was spelled correctly. Oh, my gosh. Bold squid. Oh, let's we'll talk about Bold Squid right here. Bold Squid's doing well. They know how to spell independent. Not that Brian doesn't, but <laughs> I'm guessing it didn't have a spell check on it. <laughs> Good art, Nudy Secret 50 extra credit. Thanks for pointing that out. And my headphones are going to fall out while we do this. Okay, we got the next one going on right here. Let's do that next question. Let's see what we're reviewing next. Let's do it. Okay, let's get out of the way, Brian. The, to multiply the probability of two events, A and B, the two events must be what of each other? To multiply two events to multiply two events. This is the multiplication rule and you should know it. You should be like, okay, I got this down. This is like review, review, review. Multiplying two events, the two events should be what? I think I usually chill out over here in the bottom. Let me do that. Let me chill out down here. To multiply two events, this one you should get. Don't give me a heart attack. I wanna see most people get this. What we got? How we doing? Yes, I'll take that, I'll take that. That's pretty good right there. I, don't worry, it's review. If you got it wrong, it's okay. Um, the rules are, and make sure to have your graphic up, go back and watch the lecture if not. The rules are in the addition rule, we use the word or, because we say like, what's the probability of this or this? And then the two events need to be disjoint. You probably said it along with me. And then when we do the multiplication rule, the word is and, and then we have the independent. So, I mean, technically it's yeah i guess not dependent uh like you could say that they're the same thing um and i i guess i put dependent on there but i like to say so it would be not dependent also keaton 50 points you are correct it could be that right there we could technically say not dependent but not dependent is independent because something is either dependent or independent those are a dichotomous relationship right there so good 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 thing right there oh and look independent spelled correctly you guys i don't I never saw it spelled incorrectly. I don't know what's going on with that. We also have the complement, which is everything but the event, which the first question covered also. <laughs> so I think you meant, why is the answer not, oh, not dependent? Um, because uh, it's, it's just the way the rule works. Um, and I think you got one right here. Or uh, So Kyle, yeah, because those are dependent. Yeah, exactly. There's a Mike Pearson problem. Kyle points out, Kyle 50 secret extra credit points right there. Um, and so let me explain why here. Good, good questions. Because the probability of if A and B are dependent, let's say this, let's do this. Ready? Uh, here's an example. So write these down as we do them. The probability of it snowing in Knoxville is 1% on any given day. The probability of us getting school off is 1% on any given school day. So then if I asked you, be careful though, if you did the incorrect thing of this and I say, what's the probability we have, we get snow and we have school off, what would that solve to if you do this incorrectly? Which will, this will be an incorrect solve of it. But remember the probability of snow is 1%. The probability of getting school off is 1%. So what would this solve to mathematically if you did the multiplication rule right here? And this might 
Uh, don't add them. Don't add them. Or double check. Double check. What would it solve to? Uh-oh. People are adding them. So listen to the... Oh, there we go, Kyle. Kyle got some 50 points. Secret extra credit right here. So when I say the word and, we should take the two probabilities... And people might also be putting it if you do it as a as you do if you do it as a decimal it would be this but if you do it as a percentage it would be uh it'd be this as a percentage so it should be as a decimal it would be this if i'm carrying everything correctly so that's it as a percentage and as a decimal and yeah people are seeing it right there like carly and everyone's putting in the chat so listen to the words carefully we have a one percent chance of getting school off we have a one percent chance of it snowing what is the probability it snows and we get school off. The keyword there is and. But why can you not multiply those two together? Because getting school off would, who knows the end of that sentence, getting school off would depend on whether or not it snows. So they are dependent, like school being off would depend on it snowing. And so why what would happen what would happen to the probability of getting school off if it snowed like if we get school off one percent of the time what would happen to the probability of school of uh, being off if it snowed the probability of school being off would do what it would it would go up does that make sense it would be altered so you can't say we get school off one percent of the time it snows one percent of the time so it'd be so rare if it snowed and we got school off because that would only happen one in a thousand times or one in one in ten thousand times like on any given day it has a one in 100 chance of snowing and on any given day we have a one in 100 chance of having school off and so wow the probability of getting school off and it's snowing on the same day is one in ten thousand but no if it snows the probability of school being off is dependent on it and it would increase the probability. Not UT. <laughs> like, yeah, let's just have school open. But does that make sense here? Why, when they're dependent, we cannot multiply. If they're independent, like if you said, what's the probability? Like, um, like I came up with two things that are independent. Like, uh, so here, like Tyler's next question. So you don't multiply them to get the correct answer. If they are dependent, you cannot multiply two things that are dependent because you don't meet the independence rule. So when you multiply, they, they are supposed, as Kyle points out, you only multiply two independent probabilities. And that's the rule that you can multiply two independent. Does that make sense right here? You only multiply when they are independent. So Devin's pointing out too. Multiply when they are independent. So here's, a, here's an actual problem we can solve. Uh, let's say you buy a scratch-off ticket. Okay, you go to, the, this is a perfect example right here. You ready? Um, so I'm going to put the two probabilities in the chat. You got a scratch off ticket and the scratch off ticket has a probability of winning of 10%. And then you get a Coke and the Coke has a probability of winning because it's got one of those cap things of 20%. So you, you, you got your Coke and scratch off ticket. Cause that's what we're all going to spend our money on. Don't, don't blow your money on Coke and scratch off tickets, um, so lottery and sodas. And so what's the probability you win on the scratch off ticket and you win on the Coca-Cola and we're already, we got people figuring it out. And then you have to think to yourself, are these independent events? Like if I win on the scratch off ticket, is that Coca-Cola going to be like, Hmm, they just won on the scratch off ticket. <sighs> got to alter the probability. And people are figuring it out where you just multiply the two probabilities and you have a 2% chance of winning on the Coke and the scratch off ticket. Does that make sense? Um, uh, yeah, that'll be in the, that'll be in the review, Neilan. That'll be in the review. I think it's more towards the end. You'll see it today. You'll see it. I'll. You got it, Neilan. Fifty points secret, extra credit. You can only get fifty secret unless you you have fifty for third, hundred for second, two hundred for third for first, and you can get some secret extra. Credit. You can only get a fifty though secret. Keep those questions coming while the review is going on. I'm gonna keep trying to get people secret extra credit here. Um. So if you understood that, you understood why we can multiply two events, and then the snowing and UT having school off example is why we can't multiply because they were dependent. So when two events are dependent, you cannot multiply them. When they're independent, we meet the rule for multiplication. Who feels like they got this? Let's see some yeses in the chat. Who feels like they have this example right here? That when two events are independent, we can multiply them with the word and. Like, what's the probability you win on the Coca-Cola and you win on the scratch-off ticket? Yes, that's what I like to see right here. More, We just try to do as many examples as we can and understand when to use these. Also have your table. Remember, that is the note-taking quiz due tonight. I do drop two note-taking quizzes. So you can miss two, but don't try not to miss them. Don't miss them. Squid. Squid, you're in second. Take down that giraffe, squid. It's magic. Watch out. You got it. You're bold. You're bold, squid. 
You got this. Here we go. Read the following as a sentence. Wait a minute, we gotta read this as a sentence? I better get out of the way. I'm out of the way. I see some stuff right here. I see a plus. I see a star, which is multiply. Wait a minute, how are we supposed to say this plus? What is the word for that? Maybe it's or. It is or. I see a star. A star should be something like and. So what do we have? Okay, <laughs> you worried me there, Claire. So how many people got it? Yes, you guys got it. So this is the probability of A or B and C. Don't worry, not gonna have to solve that. I, this whole point right here is to point out that when you add things together, we use the word or, and when you multiply things together, we use the word and. You're not gonna solve stuff like that, but just know that when you talk like this, it would be read the probability of A or B and C. So I think people got this one. I think this is pretty self-explanatory. Um, what you would have to have is that these things would have to be disjoint to add them, and these two things would have to be independent. Don't don't worry. That's it's, We could overcomplicate this, but I think the learning objective here is achieved, and please slow me down if you're like, wait, 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 what, what? But I think everyone gets this. No, sorry, some of these are quick. Bold squid, hanging in there, hanging on. It's on the back of the giraffe. You guys ready for the next one? It's about to hit. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, I love this one. The probability of a gross jelly bean is 25%. If you eat three jelly beans, what's the probability they're all good? We got this one. We got this is 120 seconds. So if the probability of a gross jelly bean, witty otter, <laughs> if the probability of a gross jelly bean is 25%, we should automatically put down the probability of a good jelly bean. So the probability of a good jelly bean is now equal to 75%. We know that instantaneously. So I want you to have these jelly beans in your hand here. I want you to have all these jelly beans. And I want you to eat the first one. It was good. And then, and then, I want you to eat that second jelly bean. It was also good. And then, I want you to eat that third jelly bean. It was also good. So what do we see right here? We've got the probability of good times the probability of good times the probability of good. That was every jelly bean is good. But we need to now convert these to numbers. And we have so much time. I got to talk slower. We need to take right here. If I get this wrong, boy, cutting this exam. <laughs> is that what you did, Keaton? Is that what you did? Oh, no. What did I do? Don't. Oh, my gosh. What did I? My hands moved down. I'm going to retract that message. Retracting that message. See? We all put it. Wait. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Did I do it right? That's what you did. Okay, good. Good, good. <laughs> My hand moved to the left just a little bit because I was like looking at the screen there. I was worried too. I saw the message. I was like, who put the wrong answer in the chat? And I was like, oh, that was me. <laughs> so um, it's the first was good and the second was good and the third was good. So that's three times three, 27, four times four. Uh, four times four is and then 64. So that's... 2764 so the answer should be should be it should be the the red one right it's 2764 and as far as i can tell that should be it right there was it the red one was brian right yes it was Tw oh 21 you're right three times three is nine yeah 2164 2164 neeland neeland you get another secret 50 for correcting me please correct me when i'm wrong i can't do three times nine wait Three times three is nine. No, it's 27. I don't know. Maybe you're saying another thing. Uh, it's 27, isn't it? Tw someone do 27 divided by 64. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Devin gets a secret 50 and Nicole gets a secret 50 confirming. <laughs> I was like, wait, am I wrong? Am I wrong? It rounds up. 27, 27 64. I was like, wait a minute. Good, good, good. Awesome. We got it. So I was I was solving it via fractions because I, I'm not going to do 0.75 times 0.7 times some 0.75 in my head. So I did to carry the fractions. We got this. We got this. Stat Nation. Stat Nation. <laughs> good job on this question. Let's continue on. We had a good review of that one. Bold Squid. No. Mystery Glider is now my new favorite. Bold Squid, you let me. I'm so sorry. I don't want anyone to feel like I actually dislike them. Bold Squid, you're still awesome. But Mystery Glider, you're our new. You're our new favorite right here, Mr. Glider.
Let's see it, Mystery Glider. Let's see what happens on this next question right here. Here we go. Here we go. Which of the following is a rule of probability? Which of the following is a rule of probability? It's not QQ. It's not something else. Straighten up. It's not. I'll give it away if I tell you what else it's not. It's not no outliers. It's not QQ straight enough, no outliers. Those are the conditions for regression. Regression has the conditions QQ straight enough, no outliers, and you won't be seeing that on any other test. The rules for probability are. Yes, nice job. Just high five, Stat Nation. We gotta have something we do for Stat Nation. We, we can't take from other YouTubers. We can't be like, psh, like, uh, can't say, you know, slap the like button. I don't know. We gotta come up with our own stuff. Stat Nation. Um, but. You are correct. All probabilities should be contained between zero and one. Emotes. I know we need some emotes. If you guys help me design some emotes, we could do that. Thank you guys so much. I love it when you guys help out and make some stuff. Like, I mean, I kind of started using you guys memes. As long as we can post memes, I think. Um, because you guys have sent me some pretty funny memes so far. I love it. I love it. it cracks me up. Um, all probabilities are contained between zero and one. Uh, rule number one is all probabilities have to be contained between zero and one. Zero means it can't occur, like meeting Deadpool. One means it must occur, like death and taxes. Uh, rule number two is that uh, the set of all probabilities equals up to one. Rule number three is the addition rule. We can add together two disjoint, i.e. mutually exclusive events. Rule number four, multiplication rule. We can multiply two uh, probabilities if they're independent. Rule number five, is that the complement? I think complement was rule three. Complement is one minus the probability of an event is the complement. Um, definitely review the notes if I want a little click quick right there. Um, but the first ones are easy. It's just like all probabilities have to be contained between zero, zero is the lowest, and one being the highest. So all probabilities are contained between the interval zero and one. Good stuff. It seems like you guys know this really well. I, you don't have to like, I mean, know them decently. That's like the majority of the whole lecture. If I think it was on like Monday, we literally did like a speed run of the whole lecture. And that's like the big part of the lecture. So like knowing how probabilities work, because I, pfft, oh gosh, oh gosh. If someone told you the probability of two things happening was this, what would you say to them? If someone was like, yeah, the probability I make an A in this class um, or an A in this class is 140%, you'd be like, uh, bye. <laughs> Devin, secret 50 right there. <laughs> You're cracking me up right there. Can't go with Claire, secret 50. You got it. You'd say, uh, <laughs> not possible. I'll keep trying to throw out some more secret 50 for those following along and typing in the chat today. Thank you for being here. Um, Mary, you can only get one secret 50, but you can get points for winning. I'll try to keep giving it away. So if you stay and keep talking. So Olivia, Zulan, Nicole, you got some secret 50 right there. Awesome. Let's continue on to this next question here. Next question. How you doing, Mr. Glider? I'll take that. Bold Squid. Okay, Bold Squid. Come on. You got this, Bold Squid. You got this. I can't give up on you, Bold Squid. I'm not giving up on you. Never letting go. I'm holding on to Bold Squid. This whole question. This whole question, I'm not letting go. Bold Squid goes up one spot. We get a crab ray for Bold Squid. You got it? We got this. I don't know. I like Classy Sloth, though. I do like Classy Sloth. Bold, bold Squid. I'm not letting go. You got this, Ray. Bold Squid, let's do this. You and me. We got this, Bold Squid. I don't know what Bold Squid is. We got this. Here we go, Bold Squid. Which of the following is not a rule of probability? I'm even wondering. Okay, we have one of these is not a rule. I just said some rules a moment ago. I did not say one of these rules. I did not call it this. You might be like, ooh, wait. Kind of, We kind of do something like that. I didn't call it that. I didn't call it that. I don't know how to point to it. It's, it's over there. It's right there. I got you, Bold Squid. I got you, Bold Squid. We're going to get a crab ray for Bold Squid. Because you might remember I said that we know all the probabilities have to be between 0 and 1. We know we can add things together if they're disjoint or mutually exclusive. And we do call this like the complement rule, but it's not called the subtraction rule. All this, The set of all probabilities have to be equal to 1. Do we get that? Do we get that crab ray for Bold Squid? Bold Squid. I let go. I let go. But we still got the crab rave. Wait, do we have the music for the crab rave? Oh, we got crab rave music. Sorry, Bold Squid. You can come back still. The hoot is back. Random right here. <laughs> I'm sorry, Bold Squid. I'm sorry. Classy Sloth, you're doing well, though. Everyone's doing well. It's just for fun. Remember, we're just having fun today. <laughs> Pay respect in the chat here. Okay. So we know the rules for probability right here. We know the rules. And let's continue on right here. We're going to continue on to the next question. Let's do it. Next question right here. A researcher decided to take five-mile segments of roads and sample 
each one mile segment within. Now pause. They're gonna sample every five, like they're gonna sample five miles at one time. Like they're taking five miles at once. Like they're taking a segment of road and then they're doing a census on each mile segment. That's a key thing. So they're gonna take random segments of road and they're gonna do a census on the whole like segment. They're gonna take a five mile segment and take every mile segment within. Oh no, I'm scared. These are the ones that scare me. I knew it. I knew it. This one tricks everybody. I put these questions in here because they trick people. But what was the key word I said? I said a key word that deals with this type of sampling method. Who can tell get the secret extra credit? I'll try to pick someone new. What was the key word? Needy and Emily and Olivia. You're right. And the all. You're right. So it was the census word. Because when we do a cluster sample, we, we take a group and then we take, we do a census on it. So what is the key thing with stratifying? So this, this is to help identify the difference between cluster and stratify. When you cluster, you take like a bag of M&Ms and how many of those M&Ms are going to eat? I miss, I did ah, I had so much fun this semester. Um, it was one of the last, like last month before, <laughs> um, what I did was, is I went and I showed my students what a cluster of M&Ms is. And I gave some students some bags of M&Ms. And then I got one of those like two pound bags of M&Ms. And I was like, someone here is going to get the biggest cluster I could find. And so I was like, I had them answer some question and I gave them a two pound bag of M&Ms. And so they got this humongous cluster of M&Ms. But think about this. And I, I was like, what are you going to do with that bag of M&Ms? They're like, I'm going to eat every one of them. I was like, yes. They might've said that. I can't remember, but I did give them a two pound bag of M&Ms. Um, so when you take a cluster, it's a whole bunch at once. Like we are taking five mile road segments right here. We're taking a whole bunch of roads at once. That's a cluster. So uh, kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of. So when you talk about strata, don't mention clusters at all because they're two different things. So kind of. Um, when you talk about strata, we must first start by doing what? Acknowledging, who's going to get some secret extra credit here. When you do strata, it's always going to acknowledge and I think Zulon is pointing out, Zulon, you got some secret 50 right there. I mean, you only get one secret 50, but keep on giving those comments. Let's make sure. Differences. Strata acknowledges differences. So if you talk about like this five mile segment, this five mile segment, this five mile segment, there's not really differences. It's just like this bag of M&Ms, this bag of M&Ms, this bag of M&Ms, this bag of M&Ms. If you had dorms at UT, do you think you should consider the dorms a cluster or a strata? If you have dorms at UT, do you think you should consider the, the I need to figure out how to do it. Well, I'm going to do some tests here at the end of the stream to see if I can get stream working properly. Um, do you think you should consider them strata or clusters? And I think people are getting it. Because if you consider them strata, you're saying, okay, each of the dorms is different to some degree. And then I need to sample with respect to how many students are in each dorm. So you're going to say like, okay, 20% of students at UT live in Stokely. So I'm going to take 20% from Stokely. 12% uh, live in Brown, 15% uh, live in North Carrick, and you would go through and you would take in accordance to what percent of the UT population. Um, and so no, I'll go back to that, Hunter, you got it. So the dorms would be strata, but then if you went and got whole floors, and I'll, I got that one for you. If you went and took floors from each dorm, the floors could be considered what? And we did kind of use this example in class, but the floors could be considered if you took like a whole floor and took everyone on that floor as your sample. So you'd be like, okay, now, and this would technically be a multi-stage, but this part of the multi-stage would be a cluster sample. So a whole floor. Let's say we've got different dining facilities on campus. And then we go into the dining facilities and we take tables of students to talk to. Zulon, amazing. Zulon, keep it up. Um, um, so if you went to different dining facilities and you took tables, the dining facilities would be considered the what's. Like you're like, okay, we've got different dining facilities on campus because we've got like presidential. I mean, interesting to see what they're like remodeling and everything. And then you've got like uh, student union. And then you've got like the one, the dining facilities would be the strata because they probably attract different people to each dining facility. Like if you go to Einstein's in uh, Haslam, you wouldn't be shocked if you saw a bunch of business students. You'd be like, whoa, everyone at UT is a business student. But that's because there is... Um... <laughs> <laughs> you guys are awesome. Hey, Zulon, if you want to do that, you're awesome. And the tables would be the clusters. 
So the dining facilities are the strata because that's where you're acknowledging the differences. And then you might go up to tables and sample everybody at a table and each table would be a cluster because you'd go up to a table and take everyone at that table. And you are assuming that people are randomly sitting at different tables, but every table, and you could take every fifth table. So now you've got, here's, here's the big thing. You've got strata between the dining facilities. You're taking every fifth table. So you're doing a systematic and the tables are clusters. So you could number all the tables and go to every fifth table in dining facilities. Dining facilities are the strata because that's where your differences are. And you're taking like certain percentages from each dining facility based on what amount of people go to them. The tables are the clusters, but the tables are being taken systematically. So that's a major multi, multi-stage sampling. Um, th so this one might be a little bit weird right here. Let me explain. Sorry, there's a word limit. Uh, you take five mile road segments and you sample every one mile within. So it's like um, what you're checking for, and I'll, let me expand upon this. So this will help with some questions coming up with the Kahoot. Um, so Hunter, I'll expand on that in one second here. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to look for potholes and Knoxville maybe wants to examine if their roads have potholes in them. So Knoxville is going to go out to their roads and they're going to say, okay, wait a minute. Wouldn't it be easier though to take a, like, we want to sample each mile segment to figure out how many potholes are in a mile segment. So why not go and take a five mile segment and do, look at each mile within it? So you take a, like a five mile pack, imagine like a pack of miles, like a five mile pack. And then you take each mile segment within it. And, and so now this is a cluster of one mile segments. Does that make sense, Claire? Like a five mile segment is a cluster of one mile road segments. This is a five mile segment. It's like in a line and it's a cluster right there. Zulon, I'm breaking the rules already. Zulon, you're at a hundred points because you're super helping out. And that's awesome. I appreciate that so much. That's what we do in stats when we help each other out. Um, and so Zulon's pointing out a lot of the key difference right here. I'm going to double check definitions, stratified different groups. Every group is different from the others. Cluster, similar groups, groups are the same. And you do a census for each group. Yep. It's a good summary of it. Good summary. Yep. It just takes practice. It goes through going through examples. Zulon, you're doing amazing and we really appreciate it. And, uh, to talk about what systematic is the definition of systematic is start at a random starting point and then sample every Kth element going forward. So you would pick a random table inside of these dining facilities if you're doing systematic clusters, and then you would pick every fifth table from there. Like you'd number the tables and then you'd pick every fifth table. But you could also not do clusters. You could talk to every fifth student who enters a dining facility. And, and think about this. Do you think if we want to know what students think of dining facilities, if we paid people to go to the dining facilities and we, we went to all the different dining facilities around UT because we do a stratify. We're like, okay, we need someone at this dining facility, this dining facility, this dining facility. And then they gave a survey or they conducted a survey with every, let's say, 20th person who entered the dining facility. Like, like imagine you're like running your card and then someone's like, hi, I just need to, I want to know what you think of the dining facility. And the person could be like, oh, I don't have time. Now, if that person didn't have time, what kind of bias would they inject if they're like, I don't have time? What kind of, they're like, I, I don't, I don't have time. They're like, I don't have time to talk to you. Non-response. Yep. What if, what if our question says something like, considering that, uh, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> considering that UT has the best food on campus. There's, I like some UT food. I like some presidential. People get on me that they're like, you like presidential? I'm like, it's pretty good. Not bad. I'll pay like seven bucks and eat like crazy amounts. Skip lunch and eat a really crazy dinner. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Chat's already on me for that. That's some pretty good stuff. A bre Prez breakfast. Come on. Someone's got to be with me here on presidential breakfast. When you get some French toast sticks, you can get some pat. You can get some bacon. Prez breakfast. Anyone with me on this? Yeah, breakfast. You know what I'm talking about with breakfast. The omelets. Yeah, exactly. I know the best omelet maker in the world. I mean that. Um, yeah, breakfast is the best. Breakfast is the best. The pizza is not bad either. I'm in the bakery. Pizza, wait, wait. Last thing. You got pretty decent pizza. <laughs> you got pretty decent pizza. You got a good bakery. You got the stir fry and the omelets. It's not that bad. Just saying. Just saying. And for like seven bucks. Um, in response bias. Yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I am literally eliciting response bias right now. This is the definition of response bias. I am eliciting it right now. I'm like, come on, 
come on, you know it. You know you want one of those Prez omelets right now. You just, you'd be like, Prez omelet. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's do this right here. You got all this bias. Okay, let's do this. It's the opera. <laughs> we had a Waffle House at UT and it was not good. Here we go. Sorry, UT, on that one. It wasn't. That's why it went away. They know it. <laughs> That's an error mark. I don't got to worry about that. Okay, here we go. Skylar get, Skylar gets 50 points right there. Skylar gets some secret fixture, 50 extra credit. Good contribution, Skylar. Okay, who, who are we rooting for now? Adorable Koala? How can we not root for Adorable Koala? That's like in the name. Let's do this. A researcher selects their sample based on the percentages of highway, country, or city roads. Wait a minute. Kind of sounds like we're acknowledging something here. You guys got it. I'm going to turn up that music and chill out. It's Gratify. I know, Kahoot's got some really good music. They're, they're totally chill. Chill beats. So it's Stratified. Good job right here. Um, what are they doing? They're acknowledging differences between each one right here. So they are purposely telling us, you know, in this question right here, Magic Giraffe is a bot. <laughs> so um, we've got that we're acknowledging differences. Think about this, like, what roads are more likely to have potholes? Do you think highway, country, or city roads? Who, which road do you think? First person who helps me out with this, who you get 50 points. Highway, country, or city roads? Country, I'd agree, Nicole right there. So um, there we go, Nicole, nice job. Because imagine this, the researcher lives in the country and they just go outside their home and collect the first 20 miles outside their home. Who's got some 50 secret extra credit points? The researcher lives in the country and goes outside their house and collects the first 20 mile segments around their house. What kind of sampling is that? They could live anywhere and collect the first 20 miles, but let's just say they live in the country. Convenience. Yep. That'd be convenience. And that would be extremely biased. We said that first. Emily gets some secret 50 extra credit points right there. Remember, email me. I'll respond to all these emails later. Sorry. I'm trying to catch up on everything. And so um, that'd be convenience. It's like the ease of which it's selected. And that's a biased way of sampling. Convenience is not, is not uh, random. It's not good. Puts bias in there. Not good. Not good bias. How are we doing? Adorable. Adorable. I bet on one person, and I bet right. I bet on one person. <laughs> I did too, Devin. I bet on one person. Magic Giraffe is just killing it, though. Adorable Koala. Adorable Koala. Take down Magic Giraffe. I'm sorry. <laughs> Whoever that is, like, Brian. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're witty otter, man. <laughs> uh, there, are, it, we, there are slides with all these definitions, and we go through them in class. Um, so, and we might, um, yeah, so definitely check out the review. And I think also, if you look at test two review, look at test two review from last semester. I think I go through and put them all. <laughs> I can't bet with you guys on that. Um, I think I write them all down and we'll, we might even do them more like slower tomorrow. So, um, check out the test two review from last semester and also the class. We write down definitions for them. Is that, are people saying... Okay, wait. When there's an up arrow, I think I don't know if you're pointing to Devin because you guys can control what happens. We're doing well? Okay, we'll do it. <laughs> Here we go. The next question. Let's see. A reacher still took the first 20 rows next to their house. I already know my questions. You guys got this. You got this. Who's, this is going to be crazy right here. This is an easy one. I hear all those answers coming in. We got this. It's Julio. <laughs> <laughs> he's pretty good he's he's quick he's competitive he got i think he got like second or third in the last kahoot of the semester like 60 70 80 people or something i think he got he was no he was leading he was in like second or first and then he got knocked down at the end he was like way up there yeah you guys got this one this is obvious but yeah i have to the video's up and so he he was like leading the way and just wrecking it. And then uh, he got one wrong and he just like went Poof! and he was like, oh, no. And he was in the chat. It was fun. Um, so what do we got? Everyone knew that. I gave away that one. Oof, leaderboard is tight right now. Julio, Julio's got this. 
what happens if I do that? Does that like make him leave? I don't want to do that. Don't do that. Next question. A researcher selects every fifth road. We got this. The definition of this one, I'm going to say the definition right down if you don't have it, is starting at a random point, every kth observation is selected. Starting at a random point, every kth observation is selected. So technically, they need to start at a random starting point and select every kth observation. Kth is just a placeholder for any number you want. It could be 10th, 20th, 50th. You could do second, but that'd be weird. It'd be a lot of samples. I mean, I guess. I don't. Then you probably oversample. So you won't do that. Well, I'm not going to sample for eternity. Yep, people got it. It's systematic. Pretty good. We know these definitions. Start at a random starting point. Select every kth observation. Awesome work. Keep it up. Let's do the next question right here. Whoa, what's that mean? What's that mean? Oh, Magic Giraffe has a 12 answer streak. Magic Giraffe, keep it up. Is this question 13? A researcher, the list of all roads, and they randomly order them and then select the first 50. Now, be careful. There's a trick here. Uh oh, Magic Giraffe, watch out. There's a trick. They are selecting the first 50, but they randomize all the roads and then they select the first 50. It's like, imagine if I gave everyone a number and then I they're random numbers and I select the first 50 numbers. So imagine if you draw out random numbers and I select people who got numbers one through 10. It would be, you got it. Oh, was it what, if, what, if, what if Magic Giraffe is the one person we tricked? It's simple random sample because in a simple random sample, everything is given a number. And then, so the definition of simple random sample is everything in the population is given a number and those numbers are selected randomly. Now you'd say, well, wait a minute. Why, how can we select the first 50? Well, because they're random numbers. So imagine if everyone in the chat got a random number right now. So if you all got random numbers, I wish I could do that. That'd be so cool if it was just like random numbers. You can do so much with Streamlabs. It could be coded, but it's not coded right now. If everyone got random numbers and then um, uh, 29 total, I think 29. If everyone got random numbers, then we could totally just randomly, we, we could take the first five people. It's like, imagine draw out numbers. And if you're number one through five, you win. So that's the way it goes. So I think we get it. Um, yep, you get points while watching. You get points for interacting. We got people over 3,000 points right now. It's insane. Nice job, Neilan. Let's do this. Let's go. I know, right? You guys are hitting all kinds of new records. Magic Giraffe is unstoppable. Somebody stop Magic Giraffe. Will it be Adorable Otter? Let's find out the next question. The researcher takes too many city roads. What kind of bias is this? What kind of bias is it to take too much of something? To take too much. You guys should know this instantaneously. To take too much of something should be what kind of bias? This one's quick. You gotta be like, you take too much of something. It's overrepresentative. So it's over. That's a, it's a, it's a, it's a <laughs> um, you take too much of something. We have under coverage bias. You guys got it. Nice job. Sam, 50 secret private points falling along. Type in the chat. You know, when you take too much of something, you have under coverage bias. It'd be really hard. I don't think I have a question where I give response bias for these. Response bias would have to be like, like they would say, it, it'd just be really hard with this, with this type of question. Response bias is when the wording of the question or the way in which the person responds creates a bias. Like good examples of that are like, is it fair that people can go to war and can't drink? So then you're eliciting people to say no. That, and it, since people can go to war and can't drink, should the drinking age be lowered to uh, 18? And you'd say, well, yeah. And you're like, you know, is this going to be uploaded on the tool on website? Uh, what part of it? Th this, this whole review is going to be up right after. Like you can rewatch this review at any time. So this review, yeah, that's Claire's right. Persuades one's into picking an option. Like if the wording of the question is like giving unnecessary information or misguide people during the questioning process, yeah. And so you'll pull people towards a response because if you want to know, do people think the drinking age should be lowered? You just ask, you know, should the drinking age be 18? You just, you just say it that way. Should the drinking age be 18? And then if they're like, no, you say, okay. <laughs> You're like, thanks for the response. I'm not saying it should or shouldn't be. I mean, I don't know. Personal beliefs, yay. Personal beliefs with Brian Stevens. Woo! Okay. Let's do that. I need to say, here's what Brian Stevens thinks. <laughs> Go opinions. <laughs> we 
got adorable koala. We got magic giraffe. We're doing well. Let's continue on. Let's see what the next one is. Is the researcher unable to get information for certain roads? So they can't get information. So the researcher can't get information from certain roads. They literally can't. And think about this. Would the roads that they can't get information from differ from the roads they could get information from? If you can't get to a road, well, then it sounds like maybe that road might not be in as good of condition. So, ooh, got it in the chat. 50 points hand right there. I don't mind if you put the answers. It means you're following along. I like it. And it means you've already probably responded. So you got the points. Um, so the definition of non-response bias is when the things you don't get a response from differ than those you do get a response from. So if they're unable to get responses from certain, like they can't get to certain roads, then those roads have a non-response and those roads would probably differ from the roads we are able to get responses from. And this is dealing with roads. A lot of times you see non-response with people. So you could say, um, maybe you're doing a political survey and people are not responding to your political survey. So that <laughs> Um, could it be under coverage because those roads are getting left out? Um, usually, and, and Claire, great point. Uh, Claire, you got your 50, definitely. Um, it wouldn't be under coverage because we were attempting to get them. The The, the idea with non-response is there was an attempt to get them. Like they they tried to go out there. They, they planned to get it. Like you, you, you try to talk to people or you try to get to these roads and you can't. So non-response is like I call people on the phone and they don't want to talk to me, but under coverage would be, I did not actually call these people. Like you might say, uh, we want to know who's going to win the next presidential election. So I've got a list of Republicans. So I call only the Republicans. Would that be non-response or would that be under coverage? Like the Democrats that, it, you know, everyone else who's not Republican, we got more than just Republican and Democrat, but the idea of, <laughs> it's funny. um, if I just call Republicans, that would be under coverage. But maybe let's say the Democrats don't want to talk to me. Like I say, hi, I'm Brian Stevens. I don't know. I don't want to say something that's going to, I don't know. Just, like, let's say I say something they're like, oh, we don't want to talk to you. Then if they don't want to talk to me, that is non-response. So if a certain group doesn't want to talk to me, that's a non-response bias. And then they have to like differ in the, their opinions. Like it's, we would say it's not at random that they wouldn't talk to me. So under coverage is pretty much if you exclude a certain part of your data analysis. Yeah, un under coverage has to do more with how you set up your sampling frame. So this gets into another technical de definition, which we'll see soon. Um, yeah, under coverage means no attempt. Non-response means we attempted and they didn't respond. Sam, amazing notes right there, because it's kind of the summary of it. So if your sample frame is set up improperly, if my sample frame is just Republicans, what does that mean when I tell you my sample frame is just Republicans? Can anyone put that into words? Like when Brian says his sample frame is just Republicans, what does that mean? Like we want to understand everyone in the U.S. and Brian's sample frame is just Republicans. The sample frame, which will come up here in a moment, you're reviewing right now if you know the answer to this. The sample frame is pretty much, and Zulon's pretty much on track with that. That would be, I don't have access to the Democrats. I don't have access to other people. So the sample frame is everybody I could speak to. Does that make sense? Yep. I wouldn't have access to other people. So I would undercover like other groups. I would ever undercover non-Republicans. To, to be specific, we should probably say non-Republicans because people are either people are either a Republican or not a Republican. People are either a Democrat or not a Democrat. But not Democrat does not mean Republican. So it's just, I don't know. This won't be like as specific as possible. Um, and exactly, if we don't have access, that would be under coverage. Because if we want to talk about the views of all Americans, we don't want to undercover non-Republicans. Sam is exactly on track right there. So when would you not have access in a problems context? Uh, just the way it describes it. Uh, this right here is they're unable to get information. So they tried to do it. Like they would say like, you know, we couldn't get to these roads. So if they, if let's say they purposely like did not go to a certain part of like, let's say they're like, um, if we're trying to figure out if like how good are roads in Knoxville? And maybe they leave out private roads, like roads leading to people's houses or on private property. Then if we're talking about all of Knoxville, I would say that would be a um, under coverage issue. Like, because we were leaving those out and we're undercovering certain subsets of roads. Now, non-response bias might mean we can't get to them. Sorry, this got a little specific. You could almost argue over the two of them. I know I maybe just confused some people. I hope I didn't. 
but I wouldn't put a test question too much like this. My test questions are usually more like uh, people hang up the phone on you. That's classic non-response bias. And then the other one would be like, we oversample something or we undersample something. Like usually you see under coverage, probably the best example once again is we get too many city roads, we get too many country roads. Could a sample both having under coverage and non-response bias? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If we were like, here's a quick example of this right here. Uh, like, let's say uh, we do a sample, we do a phone survey and we call up all Republicans. And so now we've undercovered non-Republicans and maybe within Republicans, there's more like a libertarian subgroup and some people hang up the phone on us. So the people hanging up the phones are giving non-response bias. Does that make sense? But we've also undercovered non-Republicans. Does that make sense? The people hanging up the phone are giving non-response bias because they're differing in the opinions of those who do talk to us. And then the the people we did not even try to get a hold of, the non-Republicans are the undercovers. Does does that show up everyone's knowledge on the difference between non-response, which is literally not responding, and then undercoverage, which is when they're not even in the purview of what you attempted to get? So great talk. Yes. Awesome. Good stuff. I, I was like, I don't want to leave people confused. We got this. We got this. We know those definitions. Brave Wallaby. I like that. I like Brave Wallaby. Not letting go. Brave Wallaby, we got you. We're going to pull Brave Wallaby up. They're so close to Woody Otter. Let's do this. The list of researcher the road has the researcher has access to sample. These are the ones they have access to sample. These are the roads they have access to sample. They theoretically could take any of them. Not saying they will, but these are the roads they could theoretically. If you're in lecture, you'd be like, wait, these are the theoretical ones we could sample. The roads they could theoretically sample. They've got a whole list of roads that they could take from. This would not be the population because that's everything they want to understand. This would not be the sample because that's the roads they actually get. This would not be the perimeter interest. That's what they want to understand. It would be the sample frame. Nice job. Oh, no, Claire. Be live. Make sure to click that live button below me. Live button right here. It's down there somewhere. It's over there. Let's go. We understand what the sample frame is. It's everything we have access to sample. What we actually take is the sample. So good stuff. Good going. We got this. Brave Wallaby, you didn't even need my help. I let go and you did it. You got it. Glowing Dragon. Okay, sorry. New favorite, Glowing Dragon. That's an awesome name. Glowing Dragon. Who would not want a Glowing Dragon? If you don't want a Glowing Dragon, you can just get out. You can leave. Because everyone knows Glowing Dragon's awesome. When you when you got that name, Glowing Dragon, you were like, I like that. That's awesome. Let's do this. Let's do the next question here. <laughs> Dracoy. <laughs> let's continue on right let's do it the roads that the researcher samples um who would want to bra brave wallaby's pretty awesome too this one's pretty easy the road that the researcher actually samples the road that the researcher actually samples i mean i mean what what else could it be like he's trying to trick us right no i don't try to trick you i'm usually pretty nice with kids i don't try to push you in the wrong direction i have made mistakes though I'm waiting for it to be like sample frame or population or parameter of interest. I'll be like, wait a minute, what did I write? When did I make this question? No, it's sample. Was I right? The ones they actually get information from is the sample it is. So this is like we collect a sample of 50. So these are the roads we actually get information on. So it's, it's just the sample. The population is everything we want to understand. And the parameter of interest is what we are measuring. Make sure to have these notes. The parameter of interest is what we want to understand. Like people are going to miss it. It's the one usually people miss. I need to change up my cahoots. But the one people usually miss coming up here is that the parameter of interest is what we are trying to understand about them. Does that make sense? Have it written down. It could be the next question. Ooh, it's a heated race. It could be the next question. Oh, wait, the roads the researcher wants. It's not. <laughs> The roads the researcher wants to understand, the ones they actually want to understand, the ones they, like they're saying, these things I want to know better. Like when you have an election, you say, this is the group I want to understand. That's what they want to understand. Like that's the thing they want to understand, but like this is the the group. Like that's the thing about the thing. It's weird to say way of saying, I'll try to short my language here. Oh no, we tricked a bunch of people. So now here's the thing. 
So the roads is what they want to understand. The parameter of interest is what they want to understand about the roads. Does that make sense? The population, like UT students, could be a population. Kind of, Zulan, I'll show up the language here on a second. The parameter of interest, uh, we get a statistic to estimate the parameter of interest. So the parameter of interest is estimated by a sample statistic. So pretty much right on track right there. So parameters are uh, estimated by statistics, which is what we were doing with confidence intervals today. We were using a sample statistic to estimate a population parameter. So what would be an example? So let's do context again here. Let's do another one. Um, so this one right here, let's do it. You got it? We got this. So a let's do a population. Let's, let's, we're going to do three examples, and I think you'll understand better. You ready? Here's example one. Brian goes to UT students, and he asks, asks them if they like Kahoot. What is the population? What is the parameter of interest? Who can be very specific. Get some extra credit points here. You guys got it. Brian goes to UT students and asks them if they like Kahoot. The harder one, someone's going to get the population very quickly. But the parameter of interest, I want you to be very specific on. Boom, Neilan's got it right there. Population is UT students. That is the population. Parameter of interest, close. I want someone to be very specific. I don't think anyone's going to get as specific as I want. I think Hannah right there. And also, let me see. Uh, everyone up to Kelly right there gets 50 right there. So remember, it's just you can get one secret 50 extra credit bonus for following along. So everyone's following along right there. The parameter of interest is actually, and take this down. So no one said it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give someone the chance to get, this is going to be crazy, 500 bonus points right here. If you can tell me in very precise words what the parameter of interest is. And it's a review from today's lecture. I'm going crazy because I'd love to see this. Someone put this in the chat. I'm going to give you guys like 30 seconds to think through this. Let's, we'll just put, let's start the clock here. I'm going to try to watch. You guys got 30 seconds. Start thinking through it. 500 crazy points right here. What is the parameter of interest? We talk to UT students and try to figure out. Um, people are getting close. And we ask them, do they like Kahoot? No one said it yet. This is a very tough question. No one's got it yet. It's a very, I'm going to go to one minute here. It's just deep. Think, use the words from today. Wait. Neeland. Wow. Neeland got it, I think. I think Neeland's first. I think Neeland got it. Uh, Neeland said the proportion that likes Kahoot. Yeah, the population proportion, which that's what it is. It's P. We're trying to estimate P. Neeland, amazing job. Well earned. Uh, you are 100% right. That was meant to be a very hard question. Don't worry. I went crazy on it. I wanted to people, and then we see some people saying, oh, which we like in the chat. It's like, oh, wait. Yeah, it's a parameter of interest. You remember there's a slide that goes through different parameters. We're trying to estimate the proportion of people who like Kahoot. Does that make sense? Yeah. That was a, meant to be a very tough question. So, um, yep, Neilan, amazing work. <laughs> I'm gonna let you donate it, Neilan. I'm gonna let you do that. You earned it, I'm gonna let you donate it just this one time. Who are you gonna donate it to? You can do it. You get to say, you tag them in the chat. I'll let you donate it. <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> what have we done? Okay. Okay. I'm going to lower the points on the next one. I'm going to give someone another secret point. Okay. Uh, nice. That's awesome. Thank you guys. You guys are awesome. You guys, I love it. Stat Nation, man. Stat Nation here. Okay. You ready? Let's do another example. You ready? Uh, Brian uh, goes to the New England Patriots. Like I'd go to them. I go to their team. And he wants to know... Um, he wants to know... No, I go to the NFL. I go to the NFL. Brian goes to the NFL. I'm just using a larger population. I gave away the answer to that one. Brian goes to the NFL, and he wants to know how much the players weigh. So he wants to know how much the players weigh. So who can get a, a 100 points right here? You'll be at 100. I'm giving away some big points right here. So what is the population? Brian goes to the NFL. Ooh, Claire's taking a guess at the next one. Very close, Claire. Switched it up by doing this. So what is the population? What is the population? I think Tyler got it right there. Tyler says the population is NFL. Tyler, you're really, I'm going to give it to Tyler right there. Tyler's first person to say the population is the NFL, but I want someone to be very specific for another 100. This will put you to 100. You don't get like 150. So this will, we'll do two examples. Who can be very specific about the parameter? This is a tricky one again. 
this one's only worth 100 because you kind of know the trick now, but there's a change in it. Let me see who's going to get it first. The parameter of interest. People, yeah, and there's a trick. There's a trick to this one. I'm going to give, I'm going to give one minute right here. I'm going to put uh, one minute on the clock. I don't think I've seen it yet. So, wait. I think I might give it for that. Yeah, I think I think Olivia. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead. Olivia got the points right there. Olivia, that's pretty much what I want to see. The popu the parameter of interest is the mean weight of NFL players. Like, um, if we're seeing how much players weigh, then we want to analyze the mean weight. And if you notice, there was a switch with the first question being, what was it, Kahoot, which is proportions. And the second question being weights, which is quantitative, which literally goes back to the first lecture, which is quantitative versus categorical. So that's going to be a big thing that we'll need to track. Does that make sense right there? Who, who thinks they follow along that the weights of players is quantitative, so we want to analyze the mean weight of players, whether or not people like Kahoot is categorical. Does that all make sense? Is everyone on track with that right there? Good. If you're tracking that, that's going to help you for the remainder of the semester. So the mean weight of players was the was the parameter of interest we want to understand it does that make sense what a parameter of interest is we have a population of nfl players we want to understand the nfl players the parameter of interest is what do we want to understand about the players like what do we want to understand about the population so the population is the thing we want to understand the parameter of interest sometimes known as the parameter of interest or the population parameter of interest you'll hear it called a lot of ways you'll hear it called the parameter the parameter of interest the population parameter of interest it's what we want to understand about the population so it can be called the population parameter of interest it's just a long way of saying parameter parameter of interest but what would you want to know about roads ah oh, what would we want to know I bet you Magic Giraffe might know with the next question. The researchers collecting the average amount of potholes per mile. That's what we want to know. We want to know on average, like the average amount, just like this NFL example, what is this? Because now we're trying to figure out the average amount of potholes per mile. And you should know instantaneously. So I wish I could be like, question over. We might, we might finish in time. Do we have 19 or 20 players? <laughs> That'd be so mean, Neilan. That'd be so mean. Boom, right there. Show me parameter of interest. You guys got it. It is the parameter of interest. Nice job right there. It is the parameter of interest. That's what we want to understand. So it's a really good review. The parameter of interest is what we want to understand. And so the roads are the population because we, we're, we're understanding the roads. What we want to understand about the roads is the parameter of interest. And just kind of break down the words parameter is just like some parameter like a parameter meaning like a measurement and then in like a parameter meaning a parameter uh, let's use the same word <laughs> parameter being uh some kind of measurement and of interest meaning this is what we want to understand it's the parameter that we're interested in understanding about the population that's why it's called like sometimes population parameter of interest so does does it who feels like this makes a lot more sense let's see some yeses in the chat I think you guys are doing really well. I feel like we we did some really good examples right now. And you're like, I got this. I'm going to play with the hair. Good stuff. Let's do this. Let's do this next question right here. Tide leaderboard. Tide leaderboard here. Let's see this. Probability of making a shot is 30%. What is the compliment? This is a quick one. Who's got this? Boom. Let's see this. Get some quick points. See. It's muy bueno. We got this. Me gusta mucho. I don't know how to say 0.7 in Spanish. You guys got it. That's you guys got this. This is also a review of P times Q over N square root. Look at all those answers. Amazing job. An amazing job on these points. You guys know how to find the complement really easy. It's just one minus the event. We have been learning lately that P times Q or P and Q are complements. So make sure to have those notes for like a lot of these things. Not that they're review, but uh, they're used in later chapters. So we should know like P and Q are complements and amazing job. That was awesome. I love seeing everyone get the question right. Awesome job. Woo, it's going to be crazy right here. P and Q are complements with an E. And I didn't know that for multiple semesters. And then the students told me. And I was like, oh, whoops. I don't know how to spell. <laughs> the law of averages is a fallacy. The law of averages is a fallacy. This was brought up earlier. Oh, I need to get out of the way. I might give a hint. Let me double check. I need to get out of the way. 
think I did. Yep, I did need to get out of the way. Sorry about that. <laughs> I gave away the answer. <laughs> I didn't need to get out of the way. Darn you, Kahoot, putting the right answer in a random spot that I'm in. Um, so the answer is given away right now. The truth is the law of large numbers. And I didn't call it the law of large numbers here, but the law of large numbers states that past events do not influence independent trials. <laughs> I often do. I often do. So the quick people can get it real quick. And then the, the people on track can be like, oh, wait a minute. He said that's the right answer and be reading it over. I, I often want people to look in and be like, oh, wait, that is the right answer. Past events do not influence independent trials. The law of averages states that if you lose, you're more likely to win on the next one. It's literally the idea of somebody being like, well, I've lost 10 times a row on scratch off tickets. Let me buy 10 more. And you're like, you're not more likely to win. Every scratch off ticket is independent of the previous. The scratch off ticket doesn't care. Neelan believes it. <laughs> so um, we know with what is called the law of large numbers. And I, I just break down what it says. The law of large numbers. That as we do more and more trials, we will observe the true probability of an event in the long run. So if the probability of an event is something like 20%, you could just keep watching. Like imagine someone says to you that they uh, make their free throws 80% of the time. Would you, would you be like, whoa, that's amazing. You make 80% of your free throws? Like on a on like regulation hoop, regulation distance? Like, yeah, yeah, 80%. What if you watch someone lose? <laughs> no um well oh wait here let me kyle i mentioned that kyle uh maybe <laughs> because those machines are not completely random they have payouts and stuff so in that instance it's not completely random that's why i often mention poker because in poker the cards don't care but on slot machines like things like that those there's technicalities to that because the way those are programmed they might have certain payouts and so it's, it might not be completely random. So then past events might influence, uh, they might not be independent trials. So you notice it says that they're independent trials. And so to you know, good, good question, Kyle, 50 points. Thank you so much. Really good question right there. Cause maybe not that I play slot machines, but you'd be like, well, why did that person win? I thought that was because those are not independent trials. The machine might be more likely to pay out after a certain amount of time. <laughs> I think it's just rigged. What? The machines are, are meant to make money off you. Cause yeah, you know, that's the way it works. Um, and so imagine this, your friend says that they make 80% of their free throws. And so you say, here, here, shoot this basketball. And they shoot their first free throw and it hits the rim and bounces off. And you're like, well, I guess you're not an 80% free throw shooter. What's what percent of free throws have they made if they missed their very first free throw? Who's got 50 points right here. If you haven't gotten it, be quick. What percent of free throws have they made? If they missed their first free throw, zero. Scholar got the 50 right there. Remember, you can only get 50 unless you got some extra thing that I gave out, which was crazy. Like Devin, Devin got the extra from Neilan right there. So, um, and everyone who said you got your 50 right now, if you're responding, so you got your 50, which was a secret extra credit for playing along. Um, and so, Mary, you can only get 50. And I did give a few people 100, and then I gave Devin got the 500 from the secret, secret, secret. So, what is the problem, like? Why would you not say to your friend, well, you're a 0% free throw shooter. What should you, what law should you bring into effect? 100 points first person who says it. It's the actual law. It's the actual truth to actually see if they're being honest and or to see if they understand what they really are. Who knows it? You get put to 100. I'll take that right there, Zulon. And Zulon, you've been so helpful. Yep. And also Olivia. Olivia and Zulon, boom, right there. Law of large numbers. I mean, big numbers, still the same thing. It has to do with getting more trials. Um, law of large numbers states, what, what do we mean by large numbers? We're saying if you observe them in the long run, you will observe the true probability. And if it is true that they're an 80% free throw shooter in the long run, repeated trials will show this, but if their free throws are independent, if like, which is, let's just assume if they miss their first free throw, what's the probability they make the next one? If their free throws are independent, if they miss the first what is the probability they'll make the next one? It would be they're an 80% free throw shooter. So what's the probability they make the next one? If they're an 80% free throw shooter, 80%. You don't even have to worry about that first free throw. If they're independent trials, then the probability of that. Now, what is the probability they miss a free throw and then make a free throw? They miss their first and then they make their second. What is the probability of that? Who knows for 100 points? Who knows this? I know, Kyle. That's what my friend would do because it's not truly independent. 
You're right, Tyler. You're on track. Who can get it though? 100 points. Who can tell me? You're so close. You guys got it. Uh, that would be make and make. Skylar is right. Skylar is right. It'd be 16%. And Emily, that would be make and make. Emily, I'm still throwing you. Emily, you're at 100. You were quick off the bat right there. And Tyler, Emily, and Skylar, you guys are at 100. You guys were first with some answers right there. And I like all those answers first. Um, you would multiply the two events and it'd be 0 0.8 times 0 0.2, which is 0 0.16. And then 0 0.164, 0 0.6, 0.64 would be they make the first and they make the second. There we go. You want to know what's interesting? What's the probability? Watch this. The probability they miss both, like if they do two free throws, the probability of that would be 0.04. The probability they make both of the free throws would be 64% because 0.8 times 0.8. Can you figure out the probability that they make at least one of their, or not at least one, excuse me. What's the probability they make one of their free throws? Now they could make the first and miss the second. They could make the second and miss the first. The probability of one, if you notice, this will complete the set. What is the prob? You got it. You're right, Zulon. Yep. It'd be that right there. Because in truth, it's, uh, we could call it good, bad, or bad, good, like they're shots. And you could add those. So it's 16% plus 16%. Does everyone see how that kind of works right there? Because you could say they could make the first, miss the second, or they could miss the first, make the second. So you can add those together. So it's, they could do this or this when they shoot their free throws. So it's 32%, but you can also figure that out by figuring out the set of probabilities. And so those are some other tougher questions dealing with like probability sets. Yep, there's two combinations. So, and then there's combination laws and stuff like that. Yep, Hannah, that was a quick way right there. That's the quickest way. Yeah, and then the 0 0.04 right there. So that's the quickest way is just to say, well, they're either going to make zero, one or two, and so now that we look through these events, we can just subtract off and say, well, if they don't make zero, they don't make two, they made one. And that's how you do it right there. Like they don't do this or this. You got it. You guys know it. You guys are, man, you guys know these. See, this chapter is fun. It's so much fun. It's so easy. I'm not easy. I mean, I don't know. I, 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 I like it. Ah, I'm going to pull the things out of my hair. <laughs> I like that chapter. I don't want to say things are easy. It's easy if you do it a lot. And I do, I've been teaching this for a decade. <laughs> Teach it for a decade. Then it's easy. We know that UT is 20% freshmen. We sample 200 students. 30 report being freshmen. What is P hat? 30 report being freshmen. What is P hat? It it was only after I taught this for a decade that it became easy. On year nine, it was still tough. Year nine, I was like, man, this is tough. And then decade hit and I was like, whoa. Whoa. I was like, well, this is easy. One decade later. You got it. Nice job, Sam, right there. That is P hat. Ooh, we tricked a lot of people right here. Can anyone for 100 points put in the chat what P hat stands for? I mean, it's P with a hat on it, but what what is it in words? What is P hat? What is P hat? This was from today's lecture. What is P hat? <laughs> what is P hat? Sample proportion, Ben, nice job, 100 points were there. It's sample proportion. Um, the 20% is what we know. We know UT is 20% freshmen, but in a sample of 200 students, we find 30 are freshmen. Oh, Neil, and you get like, I don't know what that means. I didn't know you could do that right there in the chat. Um, 30, 30, close, Sulon, close. 30 would not be P. 30 is something else, right? Close, close, super close. 30 is something else. 0.2 is P, you're right. And we'll see. I think I'd go through the other ones right here. I go through the notation in this. You ready? Let's get the next one. <gasps> Bold Squid. Bold Squid is back. Sorry, I was probably a little loud right there. Bold Squid is back. Bold Squid, you got Zulon. You are right. That was correct, Zulon. So let's see right here. Oh, I'll show you, Hannah. I'll show you, Hannah. Same sort of question, but what is N? So you have to define P hat. You have to do X over N. So this kind of identifies what N is. What is N? You guys should know this one pretty quick. N is sample size. So N is sample size. And you guys, I, this one I'm pretty sure got people have. And so Hannah, putting you out 100 points, really appreciate the question during the Kahoot. I know I keep up in the points, but you guys are on track. So I wanna see. And so to get P hat, can anyone put the equation for P hat in the chat for Hannah to see? First person, 100 points, who's got it? You're gonna be at 100 right now. First person put the equation. What is the equation for P hat in the chat? Kyle, nice job. You got it, Kyle. You are right. It's X over N. 
So, and people are putting 30 over 200. Yep. Great job. Great help right there. You guys know the equation for P hat. You're practicing. You're like, okay, it's number of successes over number of trials. Boom right there. Zulon, amazing. You're all-star. Zulon, we're putting you to 200 because you have been an all-star. So thank you so much. So, and, and look at the chat. You guys are so helpful. Man, I was telling someone, I said, why can't education be fun? They're like, because it can't be. And I said, challenge accepted is what I said. I said, yeah, let's, let's see. I'm going to take that on. Let's see right here. I never doubted you, Bold Squid, even for a second. Never doubted you, Bold Squid. Bold Squid, take down Magic Giraffe. This time it's for real. It's Bold Squid, the revenge of Bold Squid. It's in the title twice. It's going to happen. We know that UT is 20% freshmen. We sample 200 students and 30 report being freshmen. What is P? So we need to know what P is. P is the true proportion. P is the true proportion. It's the actual truth for the population. It's like what actually is. So that literally gives it away. If you know that P stands for the true proportion, it what is what actually is. For the population, this is the truth. So what is the truth? It'd be like, hmm, the truth is this. And if you notice, we talked about in class, knowing your notation, you know the problem. Guess what? It is 20%. Boom, you got the answer. You got it. Um, we've got just the different things right here. This is P hat, this is X, this is N, and this is P. So this whole question right here is just an identifying notation question, which is so important. From here, you have formulas. The formula sheet is posted to exam two material. Almost said red. <laughs> so the formula sheet is posted. Make sure to go over your formula sheet. Make sure to have it. And awesome stuff. X is the number of sexes and N is sample size. You got it. Awesome stuff right here. Great work. The coffee has totally kicked in. Maybe I shouldn't have drank three cups. Well, what's done is done. Bold squid. Bold squid, you are fire. You literally. Wow. Nine answers. Bold squid. I never doubted you. Bold squid's like, you let go. I didn't. I swear. Here we go. Come on, bold squid. UT is 20% juniors from 80 students, 30 are juniors. Find the sample, find the mean of the sampling distribution. What is the mean of the sampling distribution? Now, write this down if you don't have it. It's too hot in here. But we need to write down that mu p hat equals to p. That is the answer to the question. The answer to the question is mu p hat equals to p. So to find the mean, which is mu, for the sampling distribution of p hat, which is mu p hat, we have to find p. And p for this question is 20. I think I got this wrong one time when I was doing my own Kahoot. It is. Oh, no. I think a bunch of people saw this question. They thought it was very complicated. But look at the look what I put into the chat. Does everyone see what I put in the chat? That it says mu p hat, which is the mean of the sampling distribution, is equal to p. This was a good one. I like this. Uh, bold squid. You might have. Um, it, that's the thing. Wait, Kyle, 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 Kyle. You're just gonna, we're going to talk here, Kyle. You ready? Kyle, did you get this one right? Kyle, did you get this one right? Kyle, did you, we'll see here. Kyle, did you get it right? Maybe. We'll find a Kyle might be bold squid. Oh, that was hard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't worry. Okay. Who got this right? Someone in the chat. Who got this right? We just got to talk through this. We got, we'll talk through this. Did anyone get this right? Well, five people got it right. We know. And they might have just guessed. Me. Okay. Okay. So, okay. I want us to think about this. Listen to this very carefully. 20%. <laughs> 20% of UT is juniors. If you went out and talked to students, what percent of your sample would you expect to be juniors? Just listen to this again. You ready? 20% of UT is juniors. If you went out and talked to students, what percent would you expect to be juniors? There it is. That's the answer. So since we know 20% is juniors, what is this right here? We know we're saying UT is 20% juniors. I've just given you what? I've just given you, you should identify that immediately in the notation. Be like, boom, that is this. He says it is this. You got it right there, Hannah. It's P. Uh, it's very similar. I kind of switched up the word. And good question right there, Kyle. So this is mu P hat equals to P. So everyone is saying, well, that's P. 20% is P. So if P is 20%, then mu p hat is 20%. Let's say 40% uh, of people have Taco Bell as their favorite restaurant because it's, it's awesome. 
Like that's really good for a favorite restaurant. We're talking like all restaurants. You could like you could say Ruth Chris, you could say Cheddar's, but forty percent of people say Taco Bell. If that is true, <laughs> if forty percent of people say Taco Bell is the best restaurant, then what would you expect to see in a sample? What proportion of people would you expect to see in a sample saying Taco Bell is the best restaurant? You'd expect 40%. That's what this equation shows you. The equation I put in the chat shows you that. Um, we could do something more like, let's say, let's go with Haslam. How much did uh, Haslam got like, let's say, uh, sixty-five percent of people voted for Haslam in the twenty fourteen election. I don't know when Haslam won governor last. So, um, let's say Haslam had sixty-five percent of people vote for him in the twenty fourteen election. Does that make sense? So, what am I telling you when I say sixty-five percent of people voted for Haslam in the twenty fourteen election? What am I telling you by saying sixty-five percent of the people voted for Haslam in the twenty fourteen election? What have I just told you? 65% of people voted for Haslam in the 2014 election. I think it might move. Kind of. Kind of. P. I've told you P. Because that is the true proportion. Now, the question changes a little bit. L listen as I change this right here. If I went out and talked to uh, 500 Tennesseans, then what proportion of them would I have? Ex what proportion of them would I expect to vote for Haslam? Now I'm asking you for mu p hat. When I say 65% uh, of people voted for Haslam, that is p. When I say if I talk to 500 Tennesseans, and be careful, Neilan, you're giving good answer, Neilan. That would be how many, but mu p hat is what we would expect for the proportion to be in the population. Does that make sense? From a sample, excuse me, I just messed up my wording. Mu p hat is the expected proportion in a sample for a sample size. Does that make sense? This is tricky and we just did it today. It, it's what we would expect to see in a sample. So when you see mu, think expected, and then p hat is from a sample proportion. So put those together right here to say, this is what we would expect to see in a sample proportion. And what would we expect to see the true proportion? So when you see the formula mu p hat equals to p, you're saying, I would expect to see in a sample proportion, the true proportion. And just put it, put it into words. If 65% of people voted for Haslam and I talked to 500 people, I would expect to see in that sample of 565% voting for him. That's what I would expect. Does that make sense? Is everyone on track with that one? And here's a hint to the next question, I think. The next question is going to use the formula of this. It's going to be tricky. It's going to be a fast one. Next one's going to use this one. But the actual is P. Yep. So in this instance, you have to know the actual truth. And that's why I used an election. It's just easiest to do it with an election because it's a truth. It's like, this is the actual. So we're saying we know 65% of people voted for Haslam because we we have the information on that. We have the data and I might be close, um, but we're saying this is the truth. And then we say, if we go and talk to 500 and the examples in class today, which I think people were getting was like, my brother knows that 5% of people uh, die from a drug. And so if he were to take a sample of 1000, what percent of people would we expect to die in his sample of 1000? If 5% of people die of a certain drug they use, then maybe it's like, I don't know, they're trying to treat uh, cancer or something, and 5% of people die when they're on this drug. In a sample of five, in a sample of 1,000, what percent would he expect to die? So this is, he knows 5% die from a drug. And then mu p hat is, he expects in a sample to see 5% die. And so we would say 5% though, make sure, and here's the tricky part, don't change it, to, don't worry. I know everyone's getting tricked by a little bit. You wanna still keep it to 0 0.05 because it's still a proportion. It is true 50 though, that is correct. That is correct, it is 50, but mathematically we'll keep it at 0 0.05 to say, he knows 5% of people die from this drug. If he takes a sample of 1,000, he would expect 5% to die, which is, yes, you are very correct, it is 50. 
but that is mu p hat. Does everyone think they understand the difference here between p and mu p hat? I know it's tricky because it's like mu p hat. Like you expect to see this in a sample. It's the mean of the distribution of the sample proportion. And now we'll do the variation in it. This is a review from today, which is really good. That's why I've paused here. I've paused here. It's tricky stuff. And makes more sense. You're welcome. Awesome. You guys are doing great. Get ready. Have that previous formula. I'm going to copy paste the previous formula here. Get ready to start solving this. Get ready. Get ready. Here we go. Get ready. Magic giraffe is holding in there, but come on, bolt squid. Come on, bolt squid. Get ready. Here we go. 20% uh, juniors, 80 students, 30 are juniors. Find the, the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. I put the formula in the chat. We'll get so much time. I'm just going to go away. I could do that when the question appears. If I'm blocking it, I just build. Like, boop. I had a, whoa. Okay, so we need to identify P. P is the true proportion. We know that 20% is juniors. So that's what true proportion means. Q is the complement, which is 0.8. So we've actually eliminated two options right here, and hopefully I did it correctly. But we've eliminated the red and the yellow because those are wrong answers. So it has to be one of these two right here. So we need to do P times Q over N square root. So N is equal to 80. This is X. And then the sample proportion we're not finding right now is 0.375. I should have put that as a wrong answer. <laughs> People do that all the time. Oh my gosh. Um, so I don't know. The, it's got to be one of these two. I'm going with this. I, mean, I don't know because I can't. I don't have a calculator. Woohoo! We got it. We got it. Yep. Nice job right there, Claire. So it's P times Q over N square root. And so it's just the formula. And then we plug these into the David M. Lane applet or we draw the distribution. Could anyone tell me? Um, I don't know if I do this one. 500 secret credit points. And we got one minute on the screen. Can anyone tell me the Z score for finding 30 juniors? One minute on the screen, 500 secret extra credit points. Can anyone tell me the Z score for 30 juniors? I'm working it in my head right now as we think about it. I got to slow down. Wait, wait, wait. 0.375. So you got to tell us the Z score for it. Okay, I know what it is basically. It's right below a certain number. Ah, uh, that, that is very, that is, I think you have P hat right there. 0.375 is P hat. Well, that's P, that's P hat. What is the Z score for it? What is the Z score? That might be right, Kyle. Kyle, you might have it. I'm gonna have to check your work. Kyle might have it, but keep answering. Kyle's answer looks to be close. I thought it was larger than that. Kyle's answer looks to be close. Someone double check. I'm gonna give it to two minutes right here. See if you can find the Z score of this. So Z score is P hat minus P over the standard deviation. Wait. Yeah, I think that's too small. 500 points is crazy extra credit. Who's going to get it? I'm going to give it to two minutes. So it's P hat. Well, do we know what P hat is? We know what P hat is 0.375. Skylar, I think Skylar got it. Skylar, that's about what I'm getting in my head. Skylar, I think, Skylar, congratulations. I think you got it. I think I can pull up a calculator here. So here's how the formula works. Skylar, amazing job. Skylar, you got it. Um, I'm giving everyone, everyone who took guesses, you're at 100. Oh, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, we're going to see who got it right. It's between Skylar and Nicole right here. <laughs> Nicole, I think we might also give Nicole points too, because let's see. Okay. So I'm going to find out the exact uh, standard deviation P times Q over N square root. There's the standard deviation down to the decimal. And so now we do uh, the observed. Does everyone see why this is the observed? This is P hat minus this right here. That's the difference. That's the difference. And what do we do to differences? What do we do to differences? We standardize them. We divide by the standard deviation. And we get that right there. And so Skylar, I don't, Skylar and Nicole, I'm giving you both 500. Um, I think Nicole just carried more decimals. I think Skylar might've used the number on the screen, which is totally acceptable because it was up there. Um, so I think you did this, which is totally fine. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's why I thought we saw the differences right there. Um, how did you get P hat? P hat is this right here. Great question, Hannah. Amazing question right there. Um, definitely at a hundred. So I, I went to a hundred with most people watching right now, but yeah. 
So does this make sense that uh, first person get 500 if they can write the full equation in the chat? Who can write the full equation with the numbers in it of p hat minus p over, and then you can put the standard deviation just as the number, but put the numbers in p hat minus p over, and then put in the standard deviation, which is on the screen. Who's got it? Oh, wait, Claire, I'll, yeah, wait, uh, that, yeah, wait, no, I don't, Claire, I'm giving you 200. Be more specific. There we go. Neilan right there. But Neilan, you already got it. So I'm going to give Nicole the 500 right there. Okay. So I think Nicole, and be careful with the parentheses because if you like put it into an applet, so, uh, but no, th this is correct. I think you guys know what's going on right here though. Oh, wait. Oh, wait, Nicole though. Uh, check your bottom number. So I said 500 Nicole. Nicole, I can't take that back. I've gone crazy with points today. What have I done? I've ruined the economy. Uh, Kyle, Kyle, you got 500. I really like Kyle's answer right here. But Kyle, the one thing I would change about your answer is I would write it. I would add parentheses around this right here. And Kyle also showed what P hat is. So, um, yeah, just double check. And so if you're looking at this right now, if you're watching how this is done, everyone's putting into the equation P hat minus P over the standard deviation. Is everyone kind of following that along right here? What these equations are? P hat is 30 over 80. So it's even kind of showing the way Kyle wrote it. I really like that Kyle right there. I definitely got the 500. I went crazy on points. What am I doing? Um, but I really appreciate you guys staying here, working hard. This is a harder chapter. And I pull out the speed run timer when um, I ask really tough questions because I I know these are tough questions I ask. So yeah, Kyle, great job. Keep working hard. Keep doing it. Crazy points. I can't do Wacky Wednesdays. We'll end with a Wacky Wednesday. It's not on the screen right now. We don't got Wacky Wednesdays. It's still Wacky Wednesdays. What do we do? <gasps> Did Magic Giraffe miss the question? I didn't see their points go up. Oh my gosh. There's, they got a huge lead though. For the sample distribution of the sample proportion, what is the third condition? Condition one is not the answer. Condition two is not the answer. Condition three is the answer. We should know this one pretty quick. I'm listening to Mega Man as well. I'm doing it. I'm going to get some Mega Man going right here. Yeah, that's what I like to see. I knew you guys knew it. You got it. So condition one is random. You need to randomly select the observations you take. Condition two is 10%, as in we need to take less than 10% of the total population, which if UT has 30,000 students, sample less than 3,000. That's what the 10% condition is, sample less than 10%. What do we do when we get to before we get to condition three? What do we do? I want to see it. Everyone in the chat, you do this. You go... There we go. Everyone's saying it now. I got my other's delay. So I'm talking now because I'm sure you guys are all saying it, which everyone's saying it. You pause. So pause, and, and I think a good thing came up. Uh, there's no pause condition. Pause is like me slowing you down, being like, stop, think. Like, don't. Um, we pause after condition two. Reason, And the reason we pause is because condition one is random always for these tests and controls and sampling distributions. We will always do condition one random. Condition two, 10% sample less than 10%. Pause, stop, stop. Don't 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 tell me what condition 3 is yet and just think about it. We are doing the sampling distribution of the sample proportion and since it's proportions, this is the keyword right here, which is categorical, we are going to do success failure. Now you can see a glimpse into the future that if it was quantitative it will be large enough n, which is also kind of the nearly normal condition. More on that on the next test, not on this test. But you can see a glimpse into the future right here that we do have a different type of condition if it's quantitative. So why do we pause? Because we have to stop and say, what kind of data are we dealing with? And that's where people usually make a mistake because they choose a wrong condition or they like, wait, what what condition do I do next? So condition one, condition two, you can just, just knock them off just real quick. Magic Giraffe was just messing with us. Magic Giraffe was like, I'm going to give them a shot. <laughs> Thank you, Magic Giraffe. Inspired Goat, Glider, congratulations. Let's see here. We got two more questions. Ooh, a simulation question. This one's tricky. I got this one wrong on a previous Kahoot. So we have here that heads are 0 through 4 and tails are 5 through 9.
heads are zero through four and tails are five through nine. What percent of the time do you get two heads? So we have to take these numbers and we have to start decoding them. We wanna see when we get two heads. So there's three heads and that's a fourth, okay? So we got, in this simulation right here, we got four heads, two heads, okay? In this simulation right here, wait a minute, that's two heads. This simulation right here, what is that? That's three. This simulation right here, I see three. And wow, this one's weird. So what percent of the time do we get two heads? And this means exactly two heads, if I remember how I wrote the question. So the only simulation I see, I've gotten this one wrong, my own question. The only simulation I see, but we get exactly two heads. Intense music. One out of one out of five times. One out of five times. So there was only one simulation out of the five where we got exactly two heads. So you have to convert these to heads right here. And one out of the five simulations had exactly two heads. Get ready for another simulation question coming up here in just a second. Magic bold bold squid, you're awesome. Bold squid, you're awesome. Come on, bold squid. Hold on to that lead. Look at this. This is insanity. Insanity right here. You ready for this? You ready? You ready? What percent of the time did you get two tails? Ah, two tails. Now we got to do it with two tails here. Scary music. This is the final question on the Kahoot. Who will win? Will it be Bold Squid? Or will it be Magic Giraffe? I don't think anyone can beat Magic Giraffe. They got some good music for this last question. <laughs> I think I think Magic Giraffe has like got a huge Whoa! I didn't even have time to solve this. So it should be two times out of the five. So here is one of the occurrences where we have two times and I'm highlighting these. Why is Brian highlighting eight and nine? Why is Brian highlighting eight and nine? Because these represent tails right here. So this is an occurrence where we got two tails. So this trial right here, we had two tails. And then this trial right here, we had two tails. Uh, this one, there was one tail. That does not mean two tails. This one right here, there were three tails. This one, there was two tails. This one, there was two tails. And this one, there was all heads. So that's got it. Let's look at this table right here. Let's see who wins. Test to review podium. Who's winning right here? Bold Squid. Show. Whoa. Oh, Bold Squid. What happened? Adorable Koal. Wait, those are the two I was voting on. I, I, I got to guess. Is it Magic Giraffe? Oh, wow. I'm good at this. Nice job. Nice job. I'm going to try some stuff in the chat right here. So if you want to hang out for a second. Um, I'm going to try to do polls live in the chat. So, um, who was it? I'm interested who. They can always say who they were. Um, they can be like, <laughs> let me turn on the music later. Okay. I'm going to try to do some voting in the chat. So if you want to chill out for a moment, I'm going to, I'm going to do a little testing with Streamlabs. Um, oh, and then I can try another thing. There's two things I wanted to try. So I can't see the chat for the moment. Streamlabs has like remixed their song, not Streamlabs, but Kahoot has remixed their song so many times. I think it's a good song. Where is it? There's a way for me to pull and a way to do it. Did the music? Let me see what everyone's saying in the chat. Hang out in the chat. I'm gonna do a little, oh, look at all those points. See you, Ben. See you, Ben. We'll see if anyone's still here. I'm gonna try to run some polls in the chat. Um, Chatbot documentation. Oh, found it. How do I do a poll? Here's a poll. Okay. So it's saying to run a poll live. Poll start voting. Wait, that's not how I do it. What game should I put? That's not what I got. Poll start voting on options mini games they showed a way to do it 
Example, vote one. Okay, that's how you vote. There's a way to do it though. Oops. Hmm. Oh, wait, wait, here it is. Voting option. Let's try this. Let's just copy what they have right here. This should... Okay, this should ask what video game do I want to play. Let's see if this does this. Is it going to start the poll? Will it do it? It looks like it's not doing it. They might... Let me try this. <laughs> I know. I'm copying their code from their thing. I know, like, a Pokemon would be awesome. Let me try this. Okay. <laughs> Everyone's voting Witcher 3 right now. Okay, it looks like it's not... I don't know if it'll... It won't let me run it via commands in the chat, which is such a bummer. I have to go into Streamlabs. And then there's something... I'm going to try another thing here. So... I can only do these live on stream, so I have to be in a public stream. So, like, I wanted to do this after the stream to see. I tried it in the Streamlabs chat, and it's not doing it either. If I was on Twitch, I think it would work. So, I think these commands work on Twitch. At least we got the loyalty point system on YouTube. I'm going to try another thing right here. So, give me a half second. We're going to try another uh, thing that I'm going to see if it works. I'm going to try to see if I can show you guys and gals... Um, I'm going to try to see if I can show you a poll going on, which I've, is something I've wanted to do. I got to do live right here. Okay. So let's go to polls and I'm going to see if I can show you a poll going on. That's not doing it. Let me go to polls. Click the launch button, place the capture. If you're in OBS, you can use this. <sighs> Streamlabs, why are you so complicated? Build your custom website. I don't need a website. Let me try, I'm gonna start a poll. Okay. So here, we'll do it. We'll do best video game. Best video game. Let's go Pokemon, which is gonna be P. Or um, Mario Kart, which is MK. We got Pokemon versus Mario Kart right here. And poll added, start poll, Pokemon for P, Mario Kart. So the poll is going on. We'll see if people start voting on this. It should be showing up in the chat right now. Let me see if chat's, what chat's doing. So, um, yep, you guys are already voting. I'm going to see if I can show this poll right now. This is what I was investigating. I was looking into this. Uh, polls... Up, oh, it's it did it. It did it. All right. Yes, I think I can show it now. Okay, so here's what I can do is let me go to sources and I'm do poll. Bah! Okay. <laughs> Bring it all the way down here. There we go. Okay. There we go. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll set that up in the back end. Okay. Let me. Try this out right here. All right, let me see. Yes, there we go. Up, oh, wrong button. Ah, come on. There we go. We go here. 
And wait, there's no wait, there's no option three. Turn off red active pull then. Oh, two seconds. Wrong crap, crap capture. Wrong capture. We're so close. Oh okay, yeah, we got it. That's got it. Where'd it go? <sighs> We're so close, everyone. We're so close to being able to show the polls on stream. You're welcome. Yep. Today's no taking quiz from yesterday. Sorry, I'm... And if you're in the chat, oh, that guy, what's up? How you doing, that guy? We're doing a little bit of maintenance right here, trying to figure out what's going on, getting everything maintenanced, trying to fix our stream labs. You're welcome, Kelly. And we got some Mario Kart votes in the chat. It's saying, let me try this again. It's saying it should be getting that window. Why is that not? This is, <laughs> this is, this is anything but epic right now, Nick. Since, since I'm on a live stream right now, and I'm able to actually look into like what's happening and like work on my, cause I can't actually do the polls and everything unless I'm live streaming. So this is like all but epic right now. We were having some epic review a moment ago and it was, it was totally epic. Oh, I don't even have my voices. Oh, that's the wrong button for voices. It was totally epic a moment ago. Not anymore. This is, we're, we're being boring now. I'm having trouble with work and not sure if we want to go over a couple problems I had. I sent you an email. Yeah, which one were you working on? Let me pull that up. Let's do a homework assignment. Let's do a homework assignment here. Which one? Was there a certain one that you were working on? See, we can show the Kahoot code now. People are like, oh, that's Kahoot code. Move the block. It's like, wait a minute. Was that? Oh, there's the other block. There we go. Number two. Number two. Number two, which, which problem was it? Let me end that poll. Let me end the poll. And I've got a polls here. I've got so many things happening. Close the poll. Okay. Poll has been closed. I will figure out everything going on. Mario Kart one out. Mario Kart one. A marketing researcher for a phone company surveys. Which which chapter is that one in? Ba -da -ba -da. Marketing researcher. I think we're in the other chapter. <clears throat> I just think of who it again. Okay, give me a half second here. I'm going to log in. A marketing researcher. I think that's chapter 13. Chapter 13... Chapter 13, is it homework or quiz? Is it, is on chapter, is it homework or quiz? Uh, is sampling distribution homework or quiz? I think that one's, is that one homework? It's on the quiz, cool, okay. So chapter 13, quiz. Okay, give me a half second, I'll have it up. So we got to there we go. A little chill out music here. So we got sampling distributions. Here we are. Here we are. So with this question right here, this one uh, with the marketing researcher, we want to figure out uh, the standard deviation for this distribution. And also we want to figure out if they want to get half, half of their standard deviation. So what is the formula for the standard deviation? The formula for the standard deviation is what? What is the formula for the standard deviation? Dun, 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 d
if you've heard me say this a few times, you're like, P times Q over N square root. P times Q over N square root. So now that we know the standard deviation formula, we have to identify P. P right here is the true proportion, which is 15%. From 15%, we can find out, nice job right there, Hunter. We can find out Q. So Q is going to be one minus P right there, because P and Q are complements of each other. You got it, nice job, Kelly. So P times Q over N square root. And that is the standard deviation. We're gonna copy, we're gonna delete down to four decimals and we put in the fourth and we get that one right. We'll see if it's right in a moment. Now this is the one that tricks people because, did I close out all my Word documents? I didn't. This one tricks a lot of people here because it says we wanna get half the standard deviation. Now, the formula we just saw for, you bet, we're just reviewing right now. Feel free to ask questions, say, hey, we did P times Q over N square root. That's what we did right there. And so, um, uh, oh, cool, I'll do it here in a second, Neil. great question. If we wanna get one half of this, can we just multiply these two things together with algebra? Can you just multiply those two together with algebra? Can you just, I mean, you can try, but it's not gonna work because you can't multiply something under a radical under something not under a radical. So why don't we put this under a radical right here, but it's not the same thing now. How could we write one half, but as a square rooted thing? Well, as this. If you notice right there, um, now we have the square root of one fourth. And you can confirm that this is one half by going here and doing one fourth and confirming that if you square root it is one half. So the square root of one fourth is one half. So this thing right here is actually one half. Does that make sense? D d yeah, so that is one half. Like it's just another way of writing it. You're like, well, why would you do that? Well, the whole reason we would do this right here, like why would you do that? Well, because now we can just go here and do this. So now if you notice, if we want half the standard deviation, we have to take what amount of the sample size more? If we want half the standard deviation, you would have to take how much more sample size to get half the standard deviation. To get half the standard deviation, you would have to take how much more of the sample size? You would have to take, you would probably say in the chat, you got it, take four times. To get half the standard deviation, you would have to take four times, and so we just times the sample size by four, and we have now solved this problem. Four times the sample size will get us half the standard deviation with the formulas we were just shown right there. That's got it. And so Neil and asked, uh, when would the third condition not work? Uh, the third condition would be something like, um, one percent of UT is from Alaska. One percent of UT, that's, that even sounds a little bit high. One percent of UT is from Alaska. You take a sample of 500 students, do you meet the success failure condition? So explain to me in words, 1% of UT students is from Alaska. You take a sample of 500 students, random sample of 500, you, random is met, uh, 500 is less than 10% of all UT students. Why is the uh, success failure condition not met? Why would the success failure condition not be met with 1% of students from UT being from Alaska? And I'll explain fully in words, but just think through that. Be like, okay, 1% of students is from Alaska. I take a sample of 500 and we would not meet the success failure condition right here. You got it, Neilan. That's the mathematics. Perfect answer. Because you would expect 1%, um, which is 5 out of uh, 500, and that's less than 10. Now, you would expect 495 to be, um, yeah, awesome. Great. Yeah. No, no, Neilan, amazing questions. That's what we want. Like, you know, it's like, boom, question. Got it. Understand it. Yep. And so, yeah, when you're like, well, when would we not meet the third condition? When we don't, ex when we don't have enough expected successes. You got it. That's the way it works. That's the answer to the question. You solve out NP and NQ and N NQ. What would NQ be, Neeland? What would NQ be? If you solve NQ, what is that going to be? Which you can think NP plus NQ equals N, which will also solve the answer for you. Or you could confirm your answer with that. Which NQ is above 10, but NP is not. So if 95% were from Alaska and you took a sample of 500, it would work. Um... So, if, which would be a lot. Uh, the restaurant seat one here, we'll see the restaurant seat one too. So it would be 495. You would expect 495 students not to be from Alaska. You'd expect five to be from Alaska and 495 to not be from Alaska. So five is NP and 495 is NQ because Q is 0.99 and 0.99 times 500 is 495. Good stuff right there. 
restaurant seat question. Okay, you ready? Here we go, Kelly. With the restaurant seat question, first, I want you to identify the notation in this question. Kelly, help us out here. What are we going to identify with notation? You ready for this? Let's do some notation. What do we have notation-wise with this question? You ready? I need, the, I need all the notation. All the notation must be found for this question. So start telling me right now, what is certain notation right here? Can you identify any of this notation in this question? I need, I need notation. I don't want notation. I need notation. Seems for from Alaska. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, kind of, kind of, you're kind of right. Zulon, amazing job right there. And so the mean of the distribution is 0.57. Um, more specifically, this right here, let's highlight it. That looks better. If we highlight it, that number and that number, this right here is P, but we know that mu P hat is equal to P. So that that is the mean of the sampling distribution, but it's because 57% of people is the truth. So that is the mean for the distribution of the sampling uh, proportion, but it's because it is the truth. So more specifically, this is the truth. And since it is the truth, it is what we would expect to see in a sample. So that's what that means right here. In a sample, we would expect to see this. So that's if 57% of people want smoke free, well, then if we took a sample of customers, we'd expect to see 57%. So that identifies that. And then next we have right over here, we have N. So that's the sample size and we'll use the N for the standard deviation of P hat right here. So this is gonna be P times Q over N square root. So now we plug in and we solve the equation for P times Q over N squared. I never put the equals right there. I don't know what's wrong with me. Something's wrong with me. P times Q over N square root. We know P is 0.57. The complement of P is just one minus, just so everyone can see, we do one minus. Got to remember to do that, one minus, there's uh, Q. So P times Q over N. And it doesn't matter which way we multiply them because you can do Q times P or P times Q. That's how multiplication works. How do you get Q? One minus P, one minus P. So Zulon gave some great notes in the chat right there. One minus P is Q. So if you're ready to Kelly, let's do a review. If P is 0.9, what is Q? If P is 0.9, like let's pretend P is 0.9. P is 0.9, what is Q? Yep, Zulon, amazing notes. If P is 0.9, what is Q? Great job, you guys are awesome. If P is 0.9, what is Q? You got it. If P is 0.4, what is Q? If P is 0.4, what is Q? If P is 0.4, what is Q? I think you got it. P is 0.4, you got it. That's how it works right there. It's just the complement, it's one minus it, one minus it. And so identifying P and Q is important for problems. P times Q over N square root. And once we have this information right here, we're gonna go over to the David M. Lane applet. So, um, oh, we just finished. Sorry, Fortnite. I'll tell you what, Fortnite, after this question, we're gonna do a special question for you, Fortnite. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. Stay, chill out with us here, Fortnite. We're gonna finish this question. And then you get a special Kahoot question. P times Q over N square root. P times Q, we're gonna do it. Let's chill out Fortnite, we got this. We got you Fortnite. <laughs> it's always fun at the end of these. P times Q over N square root. So if you notice now, <laughs> I don't wanna block them yet. <laughs> so now we have right here, we have here, I want you to take a look at this Kelly before it was crazy in here. We got it for now. We're going to do a Kahoot for you. I'll run to my office though. So Kelly, do you see the sampling distribution right here? Does this make sense that this is the sampling distribution with the mean and the standard deviation that I just found? Does it, do you understand the, these steps right here that I put this into the David M lane, which I'll drop in the chat right here. So I put in the mean and the standard deviation. And then what do you see right here? This number, this number right here, is how many standard deviations above the mean? One, two, three. This number right here is three standard deviations above the mean. So this number is what it was asking for in our question. This number right here, it said we wanna go three standard deviations above the mean. That's this part right here. Go to the mean and go three standard deviations above it. 
So we just take a look and we figure out what that is. Now that's not the answer to the question, wherever it went, there it is. That's not the answer to the question. This right here is the proportion of seats we should have in our restaurant, which is 69.8%. So what will we use that for? Well, we know 69.8% of our restaurant should be non-smoking. So we take 69.8 and we do this out of our 135 seats. And that's the answer. Now, here's where people make the mistake is the question says to round up. But do you see how I, I found that I need 69.8% of my seats to be non-smoking? And then I figured out from my 135 tables in my, or seats in my restaurant, what percent, like what amount that is. So I times that by the sample size to figure out how many seats that is, because it was the proportion of seats it says I should have times the sample size. Does that make sense right there, Kelly? So once you find three standard deviations above, take this answer right here. Let's circle it. Take this answer right here and times it by N, because this will find for you the proportion you need and then multiply that by N to find the amount, but then round up. The question says to round up on it. So when you look at the question, and we should have the answer right now. Let's just double check. Watch, I'm gonna get it wrong. That'd be awesome. Um, so we calculated here. If I type something wrong, I'll get it wrong. It should be 95. We'll cross our fingers. We also, what do we say to my Pearson? What do we say to my Pearson? Someone's gotta say it in the chat. You know what we say to my Pearson in this class. What do we say to my Pearson? What do we say to my Pearson? Not today, my Pearson. Not today, my Pearson. Not gonna trick me today. Not today, my Pearson. For a given sample size, higher confidence means a smaller margin of sample, uh, mar margin of error. For a given sample size, uh, let me see here. If you keep your sample size constant, higher confidence, no, that's false. Because if you make your confidence larger, so if you go from 60, so here you go, Neil, and ready, watch this, 68. 95 higher confidence means a what margin of error 68 95 99.7 does that make sense neiland 68 95 99.7 yep it means you, your margin of error would increase and it's saying if you hold sample size constant um more confidence would lead to a larger margin of error does that make sense does that make sense neiland when i say uh, neiland when i say 68 95 99.7 the z score is going up and the z score is part of the margin of error so if you keep sample size constant, yep, great questions. Fortnite, are you still here, Fortnite? Fortnite, I'm going to run to my office. Fortnite, if you're here, can we go over how to do the homework confidence intervals proportion question 2D? Yeah, let's do it real quick. You got it. And then, and then we'll run to the office for Fortnite. Let's do it. Two seconds, I got to bring up that question here. Da, 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 da. Zulan, you, you've done such an amazing job today that definitely let's do that right here. And da, da, da. I might have. Is it. Is it. Is it. You said question two. Is this it right here, Zulan? Is this the one? Is, is this the question right here you're talking about? Okay, cool. So in this one right here, the most important thing for us to know is how to interpret a confidence interval, which I believe is down here about this document here. Okay, so we have to know how to interpret a confidence interval. To interpret a confidence interval, we would say, I am blank percent confident that the true blank is contained in the interval blank to blank. I am blank percent confident that the true blank is contained in the interval blank to blank. So what is this company trying to do? They're seeing what percent of the time that packages arrive within three days. What is their interval? Let's take a look at it. Their interval is 71 plus or minus 1%. So go ahead and create this interval right here. The interval would be 70 to 72%. And what are they trying to estimate? The true proportion of time that packages arrive within three days. So when you take what we have right here, let's go look at it. I am, and maybe it was 95, we'll just say 95 for now. I am 95% confident that the true proportion of time that packages um, arrive within three days is contained in the interval 70 to 72%. So, but make sure to say, I am 95% confident that the true proportion of time that these packages arrive within three days. Do you notice why I have such a long thing right here? 
Watch as I say it along with it. I am 95% confident that the true proportion of time that packages arrive within three days is contained in the interval 70 to 72%. This is the part, especially when people have to write it out on tests where I see the mistakes, because as we saw during the Kahoot today, it'll either be like mean or proportion or difference between means. It can change what it is depending on what we're measuring. So that's where I, I always put a big line and I try to make sure people recognize that this is the part that requires the understanding of the problem. So when we look at the answers here, we're gonna say to my Pearson, not today, let's take a look. The question has different answers and I'm gonna move this out of the way a little bit here. You got it, you got it. That's right. That's the right answer, Zulon right there. You are right. So between 70 to 72% of orders arrive on time. This doesn't even mention confidence. It, it's a price certainty. So uh, this is not correct um, because it implies certain. It doesn't even talk about confidence level. It doesn't say anything about confidence. 95% of all random samples of customers will show. What? That's talking about our random samples. And no, we're talking about the truth right here. So um, no. No. We would not this one I always hate this one. It's a little weird to understand, but we wouldn't we wouldn't see that in the samples. It should say like this is made to estimate the population proportion, not the sample. That should be right. I was half worried for a second. One can be ninety five percent confident the true proportion of orders that arrive within wait, does this sound good to you? I am sounds like one can be ninety five percent confident that the true proportion of orders that would arrive within three days, that's what we were saying, is contained. Do you think is is contained and is between about the same thing? This sounds correct. Yep, that sounds correct. That is correct. Very similar to like my standard format I use. And so that helps with that question. You're like, oh, that that kind of sounds like I am 95% confident the true proportion of orders that arrive within three days is contained in the interval blank to blank. One can be 95% sure that between 70 to 72% of the sample customers orders arrived on time. Now this goes to the formula right here or the right here we have P hat minus the margin plus or minus the margin of error. This is P hat. So if this is p hat, what does p hat stand for again? I know you know it. I know you know it. I know you got this. p hat is the sample proportion. So we know that. We don't use the interval to estimate the sample proportion. We know the sample proportion. It's what we measured. We we measure it, and then it's the center of our interval. So we we know it. That's what it is. We know that one. Uh, on ninety five percent of days, is that what our interval talks about? It's talking about on like ninety five percent of days. Or it's trying to estimate the truth. Our interval is not about days. It's about the true proportion, like for all time. I am 95% confident the true proportion, not like on a given day. So it's not on given days or on days. 95% of orders will arrive. It's like the truth for all days. And that's got it. Good question right there. That's a tricky one. That one used to catch me off guard a little bit. But that's got it. Do we still have Fortnite here? Fortnite. You got it. Great job, Zulon. I'm gonna go to my office. So Fortnite, chill out. There might be more Kahoot unless something happens in my office that's kinda, we'll just hope everything goes well in my office. So Fortnite, chill out. As long as I can make it back from my office, we'll be fine. So let me, I'm gonna change shirts and go to my office. Like, here we go, quick change shirts, here I go. Here we go. Brian, what's up? Hey, Adam. Oh, what's this? Adam, what are you doing? Adam. No! I, guys, I, uh, I'm Jason. Uh, I, Brian's gone. I, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Just Go to Kahoot, we'll get this figured out. Uh, he sent you the information, it's on Canvas, it's on YouTube, just go to Kahoot. Uh, I don't know what we're gonna do, but we're gonna figure this out, it's gonna happen. Uh, that's all I got, just go to Kahoot. Thanks. Ugh.